Let's not start by discussing live. racism and bad rap. Oh my god, it's so fucking racist. I am posting about it, <laughs> and we're good to go. There we go. So good Watch day, now. welcome back to Castlevania. Watch like, now, very, my lord. It's very much not an American game. You would think it would, like, not have so such easily identifiable American racism, but there it is. <laughs> Turns out there are many places where people just end up extremely racist at similar things. <laughs> Some of it due to American export, but some of it due to good old homegrown racism. Oh, I mean, assume <laughs> the, the the most racist part of um, uh, Bad Rats is its Islamophobia, which is absolutely an American export. It's an American export, but it's hardly an exclusively American export. Which oh, very true, very true. <laughs> but happy September 12th, everybody. Yeah, yeah. happy September 12th. Yeah, all who celebrate. Hey, <laughs> did, you, did, you guys, did you guys know what day yesterday day was? I forgot. No. <laughs> And that was for free. It was Kane's birthday. Oh yeah, that's right. I sent him Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. That, I'm the Bomb Rush Cyberfunk ambassador. I started yeah, yeah, right. through that. You, you did it again. Yeah, I saw you were playing again. Yeah, it's a really good game, and I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I've been sort of pecking away at it to avoid just playing it all at once. <laughs> I mean, like, to me, that's a game that's uh, actually really easy to not play all at once because... I don't know. I don't play it. When I play it, I'm not really playing it for, like, completion's sake. It's more like I'm just playing it to exist in its, like, very specific vibes. If that it's makes a vibes sense. game, That's, but it's I a also... Very much a vibes game. But I've also just enjoyed moving or like... There's a lot of, like, oh, this graffiti is behind an interesting uh, diegetic platforming challenge. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of those. Uh, like, there's one where you gotta uh, make your way up Oh God! Like um, uh, like like eight wall grinds around the big tower. It's awesome. Oh yeah, because it's like there, there's one fairly early on that you might that might be the one you're talking about where it's like you kind of have to understand how like you can leap off something and then jet uh jet yeah, like boost go back onto it. And yeah. you have to keep doing that up a tower, and it's really it neat. really is in my mind just at Radio Three, like like yeah. Like, you could say, oh, it's inspired by Just a Radio. No, it's fucking Just a Radio 3. The, the other like, thing I'll say about it is that I feel like, you know, we, we discussed a bit, like, people saying, oh, it's it's just more Jet Set Radio. And it's like, no, there's actual evolution of what Jet Set Radio was here. Yeah, it's like, not this just, is... Yeah. This is not just Jet Set Radio. Like, if I wanted to play Jet Set Radio, I would just play Jet Set Radio. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't play Jet Set Radio Future. <laughs> I can. I have it yeah. on my Steam Deck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I love that that's like the one Xbox game that runs. It's like Jet Set Radio Future, and it's like, oh, that's all I really need. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really all one needs. Um, but no, it um, uh, it very much is an update to Jet Set Radio, but takes into account what more would you like to do in Jet Set Radio. So there's hmm. new movement mechanics. The, um, uh... The um, a difference between the like um, a bike, skateboards, and inline are largely uh, are largely they're largely visible. aesthetic. But yeah, but like uh, there, there's like there's like um, a they do have things. their their own individual things they do. Yeah, they they each do like one individual thing, and like they all feel very slightly different. But it's hmm. but everything it's, is designed it's mostly to do down anything to on it. Yeah, um, and like you can just, the characters don't have stats for that matter. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to make all... sure that it's down to preference. Yeah, it's all just like, which one do you like? Well, I that like was definitely uh, something most I of them. Like I switch it out all the time. What was that? I was just going to say that the different characters having different stats was something I did not like in the original. It was very much of, of uh... gaming up to that point, I would say. But I would rather I be of... able to choose who I want. I kind of have two minds about it, because on one hand, I get... Like, it's making it a purely aesthetic choice. But on the other hand, like, I kind of want... You like the individuality that it grants. Yeah, I like the idea... I like the idea that beet is different than gum. Uh, it's different from corn or yo-yo or whoever. Yo-yo, piranha. I love piranha. She's great. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate the return of optional gang members. Oh, yeah, those are great. Uh, some of them are, like, ridiculously... Some of them like kind of actually just a huge um, uh, challenge to figure out. I kind of yeah. like that though. It gives them a little. It bit gives more you something more to do. Like it's just fun. Yeah. 
And you can't miss out on too much, but just by virtue of the fact that one, they're, it's not like they go away, but also two, it's like you, you aren't missing out on a character with stats. Yeah. Like, it's but, not uh, like only a character A, B, or C can do special yeah. thing. And, like, even if you like character A, but they're on a bike, you can just take them to the skateboard. Yeah. And you're, they, and you're everyone has their preference about what they start with, but that doesn't mean they have to. Yeah, they all have a starting thing, but they, it doesn't, it's completely optional. Mm -hmm. I do find it interesting. Like, they, they incorporated tricking in, in a much more concrete way, but it still it doesn't feel like it doesn't say Tony Hawk, because, like, the entire thing is, like, you can't fuck up a trick. Like, if you press the button, the trick will happen, and you will you will do it. Yeah, it's not and like... So it's all about the line. Yeah, it's all about, like, I'm uh, figuring out, like, how long you can do it. That's why the um, uh, trick challenges are literally just, hey, here's, um, uh, here's your enemy's score, here's yours, go. <laughs> yeah, and, like, it, because of the way that the multiplier system works, where it's like, oh, you get a multiplier by taking an edge on a rail, and you just need to keep that going, it gives you a lot of incentives to, like, examine the level design. Yeah. Yeah, they gotta, like, figure out, um, uh, like, areas that would be, um, uh, good to, like, you know, go through. Like, areas with lots of sharp turns you can lead into, for example. Mm -hmm. I've been, I was doing the mall. So and that's that's an environment that's just full of really interesting line opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, you can like go from you can like it actually expects you because you've seen like little robot head things that you like yeah. can smack into and like if you smack into all of them in a combo you get one you get you get the uh, doodad. Yeah, it opens up a little like secret area. Opens where up a little secret a room from. where there's always like a collectible or something. Yeah. And um, uh, the one in the mall actually extends all three floors. So, yeah, like, it's wildly. <laughs> that's it, it. That 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 one like probably demands more so than others that you um uh, that you like have an understanding of what Emma uh, needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Also, just to briefly talk about what's happening on the screen. Hey, <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. uh, it's one of the few new things added to the Alucard game of this version. What Maria just the, the Maria fight. This Maria fight did not exist in the PlayStation version. Huh. I believe the implication from data within it is that it was always intended to exist, but... Well, there is the... It, speaking of data, the original recording of the Maria becomes, like, evil or something thing. Mm -hmm. If you've ever heard that or looked into that, because there is apparently... Never did. Um, <laughs> like, why is she attacking you? Because... in English of... Uh, uh, like Maria say, saying things like, "Oh, I'm, I'm turning into a monster or whatever the heck," and huh. it, 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 it's going an interesting ravenous. little something or other. <laughs> I'm hungry, and the I got I got a fever, and the only thing that'll cure it is killing Dracula. <laughs> yes, yeah. I understand why a Belmont would want to kill Alucard. I don't understand why Maria would want to. She is yeah. testing. She's him like a sure. Belmont in law. <laughs> if you wear them, you can see beyond illusions. Yeah, she did. She did kind of defeat Dracula already. <laughs> Stay and, and also consider it like turnabout is fair play because theoretically, Alucard fought Trevor Belmont back in the day just to see if he was like worthy. Bebo Belmo. That <laughs> is within the canon. Ralph Ralph <laughs> Belmont. There's the one in um, uh, the the um, uh, Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. that is yeah, officially that was based on Castlevania Three. It rapidly degenerates into being. It rapidly degenerates into um, uh, what's 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 that fucker's name? Uh, I can't remember if he's a sex pest or not. <laughs> sex fucker sixty nine Warren Ellis. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's not the one I was thinking of, unless it was. I forget. You usually conflate him with Grant Morrison, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's oh yeah, the definitely one I not Grant him. Morrison. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. good. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, it rapidly degenerates into his personal weirdness. Yeah. Well, and, and also a surprising amount of uh, Curse of Darkness, or whatever you want to say. Whatever that. Yeah, I, feel... I mean, because Curse of Darkness was always sort of treating itself like, oh, it's just. 
Castle, it's it's Castlevania three two. <laughs> <laughs> um, my big takeaway from the show was, I almost felt like I was like uh, not appreciating it uh, properly. I kept looking at it, going, was the entire point that I was supposed to be kind of pissed off because like it introduced all these characters and like spent the entire season on them and then guess what literally none of them matter they all die and the heroes never even knew they existed or their names <laughs> rip yeah it's all just like hey look at these losers trying to pull a fast one on dracula none of them succeed all of them just like um uh all of them just like absolutely fuck up and then um uh, the three heroes who have been, like, absent the entire season, just stroll in and, like, oh, okay, I guess we'll just kill everything now. <laughs> There's a bunch of dudes in here, but none of the ones who had speaking parts, and they're like, huh, I thought this was just a Dracula castle. Well, let's just wreck these dudes. <laughs> All right, that certainly was a thing we did over our afternoon. <laughs> so fucking strange. And I'm like, well, maybe that's the point. Maybe the entire idea is, haha, life is cruel and random, especially if you're an evil vampire. <laughs> But uh, I just don't fucking know. Yeah. I don't have what it takes. I think it was just badly player. written. <laughs> what, what are we, what, what's going on? I looked on the Twitches. I don't see any uh, who, who's stream. Dog well. Okay, I, I looked at the Twitch earlier. I didn't see any. Thank you. Oh, it's still Symphony. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> that storm last night. Oh, yeah. Yesterday was my first day in Sanford. Um, oh. it, it's... It's nice, I guess, but also driving back was during that storm last night. Oh, yeah. I went fucked up my co-worker's car, too. Yeah. No, I was literally over, like, Lake Jessup when, uh, when that, when, like, the storm started getting, like, really bad, I'm like... Because, <laughs> I guess, in my experience, I've never, um, driven on a highway over a lake before, where it's like... I don't know. Where the world's ending. Yeah, where it feels like, oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was nice. I was there for a Sanford DSA thing. They're starting a sort of, like, sub-chapter there. Ooh. And it's closer to me than the regular meeting location for Orlando DSA. By, like, ten minutes. All right. All right. This so part is like, this is the most Sisyphus part of the of like the game, in terms of referencing like Sisyphus and stuff like that. I think it's the most boss baby part of the game in terms of referencing <laughs> boss baby. Okay. It's all the most <laughs> boss baby part. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by the most Sisyphus. Please explain. Is it like, you know, <laughs> but yeah, long incline, and then there's boulders that like send you back down and everything. Yeah, I'm dead. How come Dracula's castle doesn't have any bathrooms? Dracula never shits. He's a vampire. Yeah. No, they, they're well, very. So none of us what about? <laughs> Like everything that might is like an animal of some sort or dead. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> the bats don't care. The has any Dracula's castle ever had like a bathroom or anything like that? Like, oh, this nope. feels like a. Okay. There wasn't a, a, a toilet <laughs> chair in any of the games. This <laughs> is also in the age of like chamber pots. Oh right, there, there would be there would be chamber pots and outhouses. Yeah. That's right, indoor plumbing wouldn't exist for Dracula's Castle. That's right. Which isn't to stop Castlevania from doing it if they ever felt like it, but there's a Yeah, ima imagine if, imagine if there was like a, uh, imagine if there was just a balcony with like a hole in it, and there's like I'm a- pretty sure it has those. <laughs> yeah. Is I gonna say something about that? I decided to try to look up uh, the origins of Ralph Belmont having a middle initial that's never expanded upon. <laughs> I really uh, hope Ralph, it's asked. Ralph C. Belmont, I'm sorry. Uh, I was I'm also so thinking mad. of Ralph S. Mouse. I was, yes! Obviously. Uh, Ralph Belmont was an actor in Italy, but uh, I'm trying to see where Ralph... Oh. He's Trevor Belmont. Oh. But 
Right. Oh, yeah, it's called Ralph in Japan. Yeah. Well, in... I think the original Castlevania didn't it make reference to Ancestor Ralph, or did it make an reference to? It Ancestor references Ancestor. Ancestor Christopher. Right. Okay. Which is and what I would there was like, oh, they're, just, they're just picking names out of a hat. It is, it is in <laughs> fact, what that... Yeah, I get it. Uh, it is, in fact, uh, they... according to uh, according to various sources, C and Ralph C. Belmont does stand for Christopher. And there was, like, internally at Konami, around the same time that Castlevania 3, a good game, was being developed, Castlevania... Uh, the Adventure, a very bad game, was being developed. And that game had... Uh, both of them were like, oh, here's an earlier Belmont than Simon that might be the yep. like legendary Christopher that they're referring to. And the guy doing uh, Castlevania 3 was like, just to avoid headaches, it's like, okay, my my Belmont is Ralph Belmont, but his middle name is Christopher. So like both of them ah. could be the one that's being referenced. But didn't they That's name amazing. him Trevor anyway? So, so is, is this they the named new... him Trevor in English. The, but you the said new, the guy who did the localization. Uh, the I didn't say the guy who did the localization. I said the guy oh. who wrote the original. Oh, Power Miss, now we can build gas mode! Is, is this the new, uh, is this new uh, Castlevania show? No, I believe that's... No, no, that's I'm just... talking about the original game canon. Oh, God. Eventually... Oh, Eventually, Koji Igarashi decided to clear up the to clear up the timeline by saying, "Oh, Dracula's Curse takes place 200 years before Castlevania One, rather than 100 years." So, that is the earlier Christopher Belmont that it's actually talking about. But there was a Christopher Belmont between them. <laughs> there we go. It all makes we, perfect we, sense. It, it all fits together. It, it's like poetry. It oh, rhymes. It rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> I got Castlevania. I played all of these games for some ungodly reason. I, I th there came a point freshman year of college where a good friend of mine um, decided he was going to spend the entire day playing Castlevania until he beat it. He was not going to let himself leave his room except use the bathroom until I he beat the he died. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember we came back. It was like three thirty in the afternoon. He had been playing since like seven that morning. He's like. I, I, never, like, I assume he was just getting, like, brutalized by Frankenstein. <laughs> Who's that? He got the Frankenstein. <laughs> because that's where the game become, goes from being hard to ridiculous. He's just sitting there like, I can't do it anymore. What if, I don't ever want to play video games again. What if, what, if Castle, what, if, what if Castlevania, but instead of Frankenstein, it's Victor from Darkstalkers? Would that be... And then, Imagine how many people would be traumatized by the uh, ass grabs. Would that be I fucked up or what? Don't remember which one is Victor. I'm just it's just, uh, Frankenstein. It's just a Frankenstein that can grab you with the ass. Ah, of course. <laughs> with the ass. He's got the ass. He's got the Franken ass. He like taunts you with the ass. And it's a whole ass. It's because it's it because the person the character designer for him was a woman who really liked drawing butts. According to like Blame interviews, what? No, I know. I can't. I know. Sending, sending I Igor know. out, it's like, give me the fattest asses you could find. <laughs> I, I need you to find the plumpest, most <laughs> impudent asses on these corpses. I need you to find me the juiciest ass. I ask I you, take... I ask you to find me juice, and you bring back this flat nonsense. Get out of here. I was a long ass back. Normal. I will find some way to make this work, but I'm like, this guy's entire ass is one cheek. I'm sorry. <laughs> just put, just put some giant fists in there. It'll work. It's just one cheek. It's like, it's like one of those asses that goes halfway up their back. <laughs> like Mick Foley ass, but it's only one cheek. Genuinely terrifying. We as a society are not ready for this. <laughs> Fourth dimensional uh ass. Oh and the uh, castle just turned upside down again. Neat. Yep. Yeah, that's what you're, trapped do. In, you're trapped in a reflection. Yeah. I, I do have to say that this is no. something that I found revolutionary no, in 1997. And I, I was oh, not really spoiled cool. on this, and I was just like, what do you mean there's an entire upside down yeah, castle? Cool. Well, of course there's an entire upside down castle. I mean, I was seriously fan. thinking Never it would mind. be like... A room or two, you the and then you'd fight Dracula at the end. And then I was like, Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> nope, we figured out how to double the length of the game with using half of the assets. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really double it. More like another quarter or so. <laughs> Mario, take Richter, you do have to do. 
I, you do I, have I, to I, do. I, you do I'm have to do. Saying, your, your like, job. oh, when I say late, I mean I meant uh, not late. I meant what is it? Map size? Double sure. map size? Yeah. What? You do have to do Gallimoth, though. Gallimoth. I mean, I'm going to. Have, I, the official plan for the night is to finish Dracula, but. I will see how much I can do of everything. You have to do Gallimoth. Um, well, I mean, you understand if I'm doing Gallimoth, I'm, like, holding on to something that just cancels his every attack. I mean, that's how you fight Gallimoth. <laughs> hey, I'm saying you have to, like, not cheese him. There's no such, there is no such thing as a legit clear of Gallimoth. There no, are just I, different I, methods and types of cheesing him. I, yeah, I did it, it for freaking years. <laughs> Because I was so stupid you're saying in 1997. You wasted a human lifetime. Like, with my brain. Oh, right, this so guy. You get the that's right, I figured out the... My, my buddy right. linked me to the greatest YouTube account of all time. It's a guy named At Burpees King. Okay. Who has <laughs> the strongest, the strongest opinions about burpees you've ever heard. And he will oh, lecture wow. you about psycho-style burpees. Like, before you can talk about psycho-style burpees, you have to know where psycho-style burpees come from. This... They come from prison. I don't know that. <laughs> Oh no. You say he is, and he, he is he's very or unhappy like, about quote, uh, those new Jack Burpees teachers that are out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Apple, did you say C Y C L E cycle or P S Y C H O psycho? I'm gonna assume yes. I'm gonna assume yes. <laughs> okay, uh, Galabot, that was that was the boss where I learned about um, Alucard Shield and Shield Rod. He's also a big ol' reference to Kid Dracula. Hmm. A game love. that is impossible to fit within the timeline. <laughs> it's a, it's a... It takes place in the future of the past, come on. It takes place in the year, like, 9,999. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's so a dream, Alucard, had one night. No, that's it. You, you, know, you, know how, you know how all the modern, all the modern Castlevanias, like, modern-day Castlevanias keep Build, like th well, we're gonna build. We're gonna build towards like the ultimate return of Dracula. That's it. It's Kid Dracula, man. It, 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 it and then that that strange. builds towards Parodius. I remember when Kid Dracula fought the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, I do remember when Kid Dracula fought the Statue. <laughs> and also of the Clan. I love. Yeah, it. no, that 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 owned. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kid Dracula and, will not stand for racism. And now Parodius is primarily like used for like gotcha of all things compared to other franchises Konami revives. That's the least surprising thing I've ever heard. I was about to yeah. say everything in Konami is usually for gotcha. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly like. I, oh I'm no, not, I think like, they're making an effort. Gotcha. To back. Gotcha versus Otomadius. I'm not sure which was worse. I Otomadius uh, was fucked up. Yeah, but it, was, but it was also just shameful in it a was really shameful, deep fashion. But at yeah. least we got a Bomber Girl is the same thing. By the way, I love the I love how like the, the yeah, wings are like three bottles. Yeah, they look really weird. And then <laughs> like they turn to sprites during certain animations. I like it. It's it's trippy in a good way. I yeah. I'm clicking this link. Oh, no, I hope click the link. I hope it's something terrible. Oh my goodness. It is, it is the, he is not the most tatted up Cholo, but he is, he is trying. Like, he, he he's, he's got it in his heart. <laughs> he has the will, he has the will of the champion, the heart of a champion. Yeah. That's it, that's it. He's got the will, he's got the, like, instead of the will to power, he's got the will to ink. And, uh... <laughs> I mean, looking at the burpees he's doing, he's got the will to power, too. <laughs> I believe it. But they're believe separate it. concerns. <laughs> that, that, that's why they're psycho-style burpees. Oh, uh, the lightning mail. But yeah, I appreciate that uh, the lead up to Gallimoth is all Kid Dracula jokes. Also, Kid Dracula is just Cap uh, Konami being like, what if we made Mega Man? <laughs> yeah, no, that is a. And, and also, the first level is just straight up like, like, we like Castlevania, you like Castlevania, but what if we made fun of Castlevania? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, ah, oh, I like that. We like Castlevania, like Castlevania, we like Castlevania. Let's all just Castlevania together, guys. <laughs> we all Castlevania together, it won't take any time at all. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, waiting for waiting for a collection of the of the truly dreadful Castlevania games with shit like fucking Vampire Chatter in it. Fuck that fucking game. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you had to go out of your way to play Vampire Killer. Like you could not. I did. I had to go to a great deal of effort because I had to emulate an MSX and then make sure that I was also emulating a Konami Game Master so that the game wasn't fucking impossible. <laughs> so you're like you're like there. You're on Zofar's domain. You are you are you are trying this out, but you, before you go to bed every night, you delete your ROMs to 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 make sure that you are not like rendering so far a liar. <laughs> Listen, he was a liar in Lunar too. He could be a liar in real life. Uh, Ooh, what? I, Deep. I, <laughs> so far. I still love I still love the like perverse incentives on game design that were brought about by Konami manufacturing and selling its own cheat cartridge. <laughs> I mean, it's not really that different from modern DLC. <laughs> the full the full name uh, trend is Konami no Game wo Ju by Tanoshimu Katoniji, and that uh, translates to the cartridge that makes Konami games ten times more enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> ten times. Hey, we did the math on that. Is that was he asking for damnation? Because we got this faint praise right here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you put that cartridge in the right cartridge slot on your MSX, and suddenly you can, can you can use continues in Vampire Killer, and the game uh, you get more than one life. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what's the other thing about uh? The, and the thing is about the second cartridge slot of MSX. Sometimes it would be like. On a lot of models, it was just behind the first one, but sometimes you literally had to, like, unscrew it in order to even access it. Yeah, it was a very strange part of the specification, but, yeah, I like... I think it was... I know that, um, LGR did a Philips model that was like that. <laughs> Game is so uh, bizarre. I can't believe Gogglebob killed powerful monster girlfriends. <laughs> I mean, it's very sometimes, sometimes relationships just end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's called a breakup because it's broken. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of relationships and breakup, I'm super bummed about what's going on with Unity. I hope they'll eventually like roll back their um the decisions they made. Cause I'm still working on my game, and like, Pete, I think I've shown you clips of it. I'm still like trying to get it done, and it's just like uh, I don't want to switch engines right now. We're too deep into it. I wouldn't be surprised if some or most of these get rolled back, but I also would never trust them again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this, this is going to be my last game. Switch it to either Unreal or Godot after the fact. Mm. But, yeah, I don't know. The old, we're testing the waters on this. <laughs> we're testing yeah. how bad can, how much can we boil you all at once? How bad can we be before, how, um, uh, before you, um, uh, before you are willing to put up with it? Yeah, yeah. Where's, where's the lie here? We don't like it. We do not like it. I'll show you the exploders. I don't know what happened. Okay, no. Also, the... He was staticking out, so I yeah, assume... Yeah, I, I assume he just... Oh. Broke? We'll yeah. go with that. Um, I appreciate the the effect the spike breaker armor has on the spikes. Like it's not yeah. just like oh you're immune to spikes. Like no, you get to watch them ping off the ground. Yeah, I would say spikes. it feels delightfully visceral. <laughs> yeah, this is a very extra game as we have all noted. Yeah, no, and, as, um, as I said in the previous stream, in case you're just joining us for Castlevania. Like this is a game that like the Metroids I was definitely seeing how quickly I could get through them on stream. This is a game you take leisure. You, you luxuriate in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. You eat a few mm -hmm. peanuts on your way. <laughs> or fail to. <laughs> I practiced Gaga eating peanuts Sin. during the week. Gogafer, I just can't like overstate how upset I am with your failure to eat peanuts. <laughs> It was a thing that yeah. happened, and I Don't run Discord when updating your NVIDIA drivers. Thank yeah, you. Did you catch me no. when I said? Did you catch when I me when I said he's doing like the Elon Musk business model, or did that? Uh, I did no, not. I but that could be um, uh, that could be several different things. But I choosing or to believe. They, an they announced the thing that's bad, and then they roll it back because just to like test the waters. But actually, that you're right, it is something, because sometimes it's doing something very innocuous, 
and, but it catches like everyone like um I was gonna say again is uh view post engagements. You can't okay. just as quick click to see the anymore. Oh yeah, that's that's stupid. Uh that said, uh Twitter now a force logs me out every twenty seconds on desktop. So um, oh, uh, I so it's making you're my choice free. To, it's making my choice to leave the site real fucking easy. I uh I <laughs> I am not law. Well, it hasn't done that to me, but that happens to me with other sites like co like co-host. Well, I know why it's doing it. It's because I am a set blue blocker. And yesterday I am uh yesterday I had a hell of a day. You have four hours. Like okay, I have. I, yes, yesterday I was just like okay, I've got so much shit to do. So whenever I'm not doing all that shit, I'm just gonna like page down through every like stupid opinion um, uh, that the blue checks love. And just like set my blocker time to to five seconds and see how high I can get it. Mm -hmm. I have, it's currently a, score. It is currently at forty two thousand. Actually, I got that nice. way. I got that thing way higher than I needed it to. But it's it now is, uh, wise to my schemes and logs me out whenever I'm on desktop on my laptop. Getting the high score. <laughs> All I can say is uh, is get the high score and win the game. Yeah. No. As far as I'm concerned, I have done everything I need to at the site. So, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Akamadan oh, yeah, 2. I love that, like... Is there an Akamadan 1 in this game, or is this just like, <laughs> hey, you found yep. this specific pharaoh, and killed him? Yeah, It was, found it was him. the one that Dracula imported for this very case. <laughs> to protect his... You guys seen um, that one dead pharaoh's, um, uh, passport? <laughs> Moved him on in. Yeah, let's see. Mm. Okay, found it. Found it. Passport of Ramesses too. <laughs> oh, sequel. Ramesses. Okay, I'm, I'm going to... I, I've mentioned that thanks to a drill tweet, we are ded dedicating <laughs> this stream to Dreamcast Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamcast Gary, not like may you it. live forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just found the the Egyptian passport for Ramses II. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> Drove putting forth the, the beautiful banger tweet today. Dreamcast Gary got released from the Metal Ward after 18 years and immediately spray painted fuck Putin on the principal's Nissan Ultima. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that like he had to track down like his old high school principal. <laughs> like, I, just, I to vandal up. just to vandalize his car. <laughs> Uh, I choose to believe that, like, it's just the exact same principle, like, oh no, Dreamcast <laughs> Gary's out. <laughs> that very principle it's like, it's like, like Psycho Pete it. Returns. It's like Psycho Pete Returns in fucking Always yeah. Sunny. <laughs> it's not this shit again. You yeah. bet. Like, he just God. comes out to his car in the morning and it's like, fuck. Or God, Dreamcast Gary got out today. Fuck. <laughs> I was bad. supposed to put this in the garage. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> no, I, 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 I forgot. I forgot how like the literally the first joke that Beavis and Butthead ever do is is, is such a perfectly Texas joke, which is them like uh, off behind somebody's shitty trailer, like tying uh, firecrackers to grasshoppers. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> frog baseball. Yeah, that, I was about to say. I'm pretty sure that was like a <laughs> mug or something, a T-shirt maybe. <laughs> Like, it, it's somehow, like, we're gonna call this iconic now. I feel like the very end of that episode, where they just see a dog and then scream dog baseball, and then it just ends. <laughs> they, they knew exactly where the line was, what they get away with showing. Uh, oh, man. There's a... There, there's some there's some uh, imitatable animal abuse that did get uh, censored out of the master tapes eventually, mm. uh, because it was specifically like they're like fucking they're trying to get into Tom Anderson's will, and they're like asking him like what can we do for you and he's like oh my dog my dog kind of smells so uh, they they they're gonna wash the dog they can do a fucking laundry mat <laughs> you can guess where that goes. <laughs> like for, in in the actual in the course of the show, they didn't have the the heart to have something horrible happen to the dog, so the dog just gets dizzy. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they decide that looks really fun, so they climb into the washing machine. Uh, and then they get like so they get so fucked up and like dizzy from it, they immediately proceed to vomit on the dog, making it smell worse than it did before. <laughs> there you go. 
per, a perfect episode of Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> my, my love of Beavis and Butthead is fully rekindled at this stage. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Beavis and Butthead were, as it turns out, always genius. <laughs> yeah, cannot disagree. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but I feel like the main thing that worked against Beavis and Butthead were the number of different like shows and skits or whatever that were kind of trying to do off-brand Beavis and Butthead and just not quite and none of them Beavis measures up to it even slightly nope. are we are we talking about the revival show or something no just Beavis and Butthead in general, just Beavis and Butthead in general. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. there's a there's a good interview quote from Mike Judge when uh where like any time that he gets asked about it between revivals which happens every so often at this stage <laughs> and it seems to just be a recurring theme at this stage he's just it's sort just of like you something. know it's just something he does every few years for shits and giggles, you know. Revive but, each it, minute, or why not? <laughs> b- between revivals, hit whenever he's asked about it, it's like, yeah, I'm always looking for a way to bring back beef and butthead. Cause it's my favorite thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. If you if you'd made Beavis and Butthead, you'd be in love with the idea of just repeatedly bringing back Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I I I. I I had somehow blocked out in memory just how perfectly it created the two guys on the couch genre of comedy. Yeah, like a full, a full like fifty percent of web comics actually also owe their existence. <laughs> he was just oh yeah. <laughs> like here's two shitheads on the couch, and they honestly don't have like in, in Beavis and Butthead's case, this is perfectly intentional. They don't have much to say. Yeah. Yeah. But for for the imitators who made web comics, the answer was that they didn't realize that they didn't have much to say. <laughs> but God, just uh, one of those things. The like going back to it's like, oh, this is actually, uh, it, it, you, it's one of those things that you can trick yourself into thinking, oh, this probably won't hold up. And like the answer is no, it holds up perfectly. I mean, we said yeah. it on a previous stream, but it's just. They're the exact kind of dumbass teenager that always has and always will exist. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, the, the revival brings up the notion that they are literally out of time, like, stuck out of time. But at the same time, they are eternal. There yeah. is an inf- infiniteness to Beavis and Butthead in that sense. They immediately come back in every way that needs to be important. <laughs> I still love the the notion of like they, they do since everyone's doing the multiverse they do the multiverse but the the council of beavis and buttheads is preoccupied with the notion that in across the infinite multiverse no version of beavis or butthead has ever scored <laughs> <laughs> and and smart Beavis at the as as a key point of the movie is is awarded a commendation for being the first Beavis in throughout the multiverse to have ever scored, which gives cur- regular Beavis and Butthead like a sense of hope of like well some Beavis and Butthead scored, but also smart Butthead gets a commendation for watching it from within a suitcase. <laughs> God, that's so good. Everything about smart Beavis and Smart Butthead was just amazing. I love the notion that you can make Beavis and Butthead smarter, but you can't stop them from being dumbasses. Yeah. They can be qualitatively more aware. Ah, yes, humorous. Uh, They can be qualitatively more aware and smarter. They cannot not be dumbasses. That's it. That's it. Believe my evening just got a lot more complicated. I'll be right back. Because knowledge knowledge is not the thing that that is stopped by the notion of Beavis and Butthead. It's... Just an attitude, a state of mind that is inescapable. I was about to say, I I think the essence of Beavis and Butthead, a friend of mine and I were talking about this at great length some time ago, but the essence of Beavis and Butthead is ultimately, and just practically every joke, is if there is a worse choice to take, they will take it every time. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Like, that is the joke for them every... I can't tell you how many different Beavis and Butthead jokes are just the setup of the two of them staring at, like, the most obvious way that their lives can be better and just going in the complete opposite direction. Oh, yeah. I mean, they they start off to that second movie as just, like, one of them 
uh, like fucking them fucking with a uh, machine that is designed to kick field goals and Beavis getting kicked in the dick as hard as possible by him. <laughs> so, so good. It it knows it knows everything it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> a purity of yeah. purpose that few can attain. <laughs> I admire it. I admire its purity. Hope it's okay. Uh, yeah, he, he told it. me it's just a random family thing that might. Happen. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait, what, yeah. what, what do you say? What do you say? Just you just said like... his evening got a lot more complicated. So that's oh, okay. All right. My 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 life just got <laughs> just got complicated. <laughs> Meet Beat is now living through the plot of uh, Too Old to Die Young. <laughs> Actually, oddly enough, Beat is living in the plot of Multiplicity, and all of his clones just came home. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> because everyone remembers the plot of Multiplicity. <laughs> it, it's pretty much explained by the, the neologism they came up with to name it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. There, I got another pack of peanuts. <laughs> peanuts. Have you got the have you got the thing that makes all items infinite? Because then you can really practice on the peanuts. I, I, I practiced with a save file. <laughs> How do you feel about the portrait of Sire? Because I have another save file on here where I did not eat any peanuts, so I have peanuts to spare. <laughs> mm, peanuts. peanuts galore. <laughs> yes. What do the peanuts do? You, peanuts, you have to... They're yeah. inconvenient to eat health restoratives. <laughs> like, oh. the, the item description is literally inconvenient to eat. And the problem is that when you use them, Alucard throws them into the air and you have to catch them because you can't use them off the ground. Oh my goodness. Well, who would eat peanuts off the ground? It recovers 50 health in some of the night, which is the second yeah. highest non-meat food in the game. <laughs> Which means that it's still not a particularly useful healing item. And to be clear, the there are many meat items in the game. Yeah. You must catch with the mouth. Yeah, what you have to catch with the mouth of the sprite. <laughs> oh it's my such a... It's, it's something that never made per particular sense. It was just something that they could do, because why not? <laughs> That's amazing. I, I yeah, love that's, it. That's what makes Symphony beautiful. I, I, I like. I also like that the cartoon, the, the new cartoon, is going to be uh, Rondo of Blood, which means we are, we we are we are that much closer to uh, to the the hyper profane British cartoon version of uh, Symphony of the Night. That's yeah. definitely what they're building runway for. Yeah, they're definitely like, getting... They, sk <laughs> they skipped the original Castlevania. I am incensed as a human being. I was about to say, it is funny to me that Simon Belmont is the one who's not going to get a game. Uh, you Netflix. know, like, we, we jumped straight from Trevor to Richter, no Simon. And that's that's disgusting it, uh, to me as a human. I, I feel like that is violence. Although I mean, they, they should still be um, advertising the new Castlevania starring... Richter Belmont as seen in Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> Just to make his brother, sad. Simon. Uh, yeah, uh, Ricky, Ricky Belmont gets his, gets his due. The, the one thing I will say for the trailer is that at least they're, they're starting with proper, with the, the, uh, the Rondo Richter design where he's just sort of a karate man. <laughs> yes, he's got his bandana and he's ready to go. Yep. Yeah. Ready. I, I like they. I like they put the bandana in there though, because old yeah, school no. Richter is old school Richter is, is hilarious. I love. There, it. There's an extremely di like you can see the difference in '90s sensibilities from early '90s to late '90s when you look at Rondo and Rondo Richter, and then immediately look at uh, Symphony Richter. Yeah. Also, fun Castlevania fact. This is the only game where they don't make cave trolls an absolute pain in the ass to fight. That's true. And, like, it's, <laughs> all they did in the later games was just, like, up their defense and attack for whatever reason. But, <laughs> that was enough. But it made you. them a giant pain in the ass. And God, which is the first game with the Oryx in it? 
Uh, that's a good question. I but uh, Yorick is one of my favorite, like, dumbass enemies in Castlevania. And I just throw my head at you. Just known as, like, the soccer skeleton or something. Yorick is a funnier name. Right, I was about uh, to say, Yorick is an Japanese soccer, soccer boy. Soccer boy? That's terrible. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Yorick, where does he... Fr okay. Okay, he is in here. Uh, oh, what? but he's only in the reverse castle at the bottom of the reverse Yeah, I, I literally so killed him twice why I never, here. Yeah, that explains why I never remember him being in this, because he's just deep in the, yeah, deep in the weeds. Like but yeah. What are the first monsters you're likely to fight in the reverse castle, though? Yeah, it's true. But... I love, the, I love that you can, like, destroy Yorick's skull in at least some of the games. Yeah, I think in this one. And he gets real. He gets, yeah, it would have to be in this one, but like in at least some of the other ones as well. But uh, you, you know, you, you just need the the anger and frustration he feels when his skull is destroyed. <laughs> He's got one thing going for him, and you just destroyed it. You took his entire. I you didn't just destroy his skull. You took his identity. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how can I be soccer boy if I have nothing to kick? And now he's just a headless. Bastard. Skeleton. I love the like the effect, the the surreal effect of having the water just cling to the ceiling. Everything about like the upside down candles and everything. I mean, it's it, it's fairly mundane now because you know Castlevania and it's twenty years or thirty years. Oh god! <laughs> but everything We're about like the upside down years castles for this game. is so delightfully like off putting. Yeah, they they leaned into the notion of like this is just a weird place. Yeah, they they, <laughs> and it's like the world doesn't make any effort to be right side up in any way. It's just yeah, no, it's nothing just... has shifted to accommodate the notion of notion of gravity other than you. <laughs> yes, well, and, and the monsters potentially. Yeah, like things that would be on the floor are on the floor. For us, the living. Don't actually think about that one. <laughs> oh, it would be cool if you could, like, read. <laughs> what? Just the... Uh, just the Beavis and Butt. <laughs> yup. Uh, still, uh, the fucking heroes. What a, oh, yeah. what an episode. When they when they when they shoot down a jetliner and then just leave the people inside to their fate. <laughs> Not even out of malice, just out of complete ignorance of what they've done and what's going on. Yeah, just just a complete. Uh, again, I I say that I say that fundamentally the the. They are, wait and wait. They, they are innocent. Like they, yeah, exactly. Their 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 idiocy is prelapsarian. Um, mm. Now their horniness is absolutely not. But I guess what I'm oh, getting yeah. at is, like, what what I think I think one of the underlying messages of Beavis and Butthead is that true stupidity is driven by incuriosity of, mm. around, about the world around you. Like there there are the occasional flashes of like the, the there is nothing actually stopping them from being better, other than a complete disinterest in doing so. Exactly. <laughs> like, this is not some... Like, it's, particularly for Butthead, this is not something that rests on a notion of that there's something wrong with him, beyond the, the notion of he just doesn't care to be better. <laughs> right, that's it. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. He is. I uh, was. Was it? You know. He. He, um, he indulges his id, like mm -hmm. just constantly. It's, and yet, it's all he's interested in doing. <laughs> that's it. But, but I, I truly think there is something wrong with Beavis. Like Beavis. That's actually brought up early on in the show. Like there's a. <laughs> There's a bit where they're fr where like Tom comes into the fucking burger world and Beavis is happily frying whatever like dead animals he can find in the fryer. <laughs> and Tom's just like, is there something like wrong with him? <laughs> is he okay? 
<laughs> and the like, answer is yes. Yes, something is wrong with him. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, something is wrong with him, and it's being exacerbated by butthead exposure. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, be beautiful, beautiful show. Beautiful. And uh, always, always uh, appreciate the early episodes' uh, extreme, like, uh, underground animation stylings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Watching, I'm watching, like, Frog Baseball, Peace, Love, and Understanding. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is, it, it is incredible how, how, like, absolutely, like, this was, ink and paint was done on some guy's, like, TV tray. These, these first episodes are. It's, uh, you know, that's, that, there's something beautiful about that. Like, the, yeah. the kind of, like, a handful of people at most touched this. Yeah. And uh, it was done with whatever was available. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. David Van <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I had forgotten that he shows up there uh, first instead of as a teacher. <laughs> it's actually a fair bit before he becomes sort of the default teacher. Yeah. Oh man, and we are, we are still like four years out plus from from lesbian seagull. <laughs> oh god. god. It's funny that like I haven't rewatched the original Beavis and Butthead in so long, and you I've you got say a link random for things you. and it just all comes <laughs> flooding back. I'm still, like, in love with, like, the, the perfect summation of how dumb both of them are is, is the substitute teacher episode, where mm -hmm. he asks them their name, and Beaver, uh, Butthead replies with, the, with the, the simplest choice you could do. He just says, Joe Mama, and the teacher is like, oh, that, I, I love that you did that. Like, he's, he's the fucking Dead Poet Society sort of teacher. Mm -hmm. So he's he's like incredibly encouraging at that, and so he asks Beavis what his name. Beavis says Jack, then can't think of an actual conclusion to that, and just says Jack Mama. <laughs> <laughs> and the teacher is, is very polite about this. He's like, well, no points off for trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Jack Mama. <laughs> Jack Mama. He did not or quite when understand the Spanish it. teacher, and no, no laughing when the Spanish teacher is <laughs> his shit at them because they refuse to learn any Spanish. <laughs> you, you don't know any Spanish that you didn't learn from the Taco Bell mo menu, and you aren't even getting that right. <laughs> <laughs> so the people's like, uh, Taco Supreme. <laughs> <laughs> That's an entire sentence. <laughs> we are going to talk about the penis! <laughs> uh, oh, God. just screaming. I love, the, I love the notion that their psychotic gym teacher is also the sex ed teacher. Also of very course. Texas. <laughs> also very Texas. I was going to say, I that think is... a lot of schools did that, I hate to say. <laughs> yeah, but most Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah, our, our sex ed teacher was, was uh, one of the football coaches. <laughs> we had an actual bespoke sex ed, uh, I, think that was, I think that was uh, an actual bespoke sex ed uh, section, but I was in, I was in liberal Oregon. <laughs> yeah, I will say, even in New Jersey, our, first of all, our, our sex ed, you can't see me making air quotes, was known as health class, hear it, though. no matter what was happening. And I, I'd always wondered if they did that to, like, obfuscate, because the, the sex portion of it was, like, rotated around with the different classes, and I wondered if you they... You do that so of... that people are less likely to hear about it and complain. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, what'd you learn in health today? <laughs> Where babies go from. Yeah, learn about, learn about sex. All right. We're going to talk about the penis. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Buzzcut has just a... Just an inimitable... Uh... <laughs> tone. He does. He does. <laughs> oh man. Get my shit cock kicked in by a random... 
Rocks. Yeah, these random enemies. Like a lot of the a lot of the large enemies in these cramped hallways, upside down, can be can be quite. Well, a bit and to also deal with. the uh, the with the water up top. I like I can't do what I want to be able. To yeah, do. yeah. What's the? Yeah, I'm pretty much dead. <laughs> I did. I mean, you could try learning uh, the fucking the the soul steel. You could use that. <laughs> nope, too complicated. It's gonna jump. <laughs> Go Oh, Rump Shaker is such a good song. It was written when Pharrell was only like 45 years old. <laughs> a mere, a, a mere babe. Just a babe, yeah. A babe in arms. <laughs> <laughs> Remembering Beavis and Butthead did also remind me of one of my favorite, uh, just one-off jokes from, uh, Daria, which is just her dad trying to... Uh, thread a needle and saying, Why do they have to make the eye of the needle so small? And just Daria offhandedly quipping, probably to piss off the camera. <laughs> you guys hear me? Yeah, yep, I'm yep. in. Get that back. back. Far away from the routers. Don't know how well this will work. <laughs> Are you okay? Is everything fine? <laughs> I mean, my mother in law's over. Uh, uh, that'll just do made it. this fold out. <laughs> oh, there you go. Gotcha, gotcha. Good day, and welcome yeah. to bad sitcom plots that are your life. It's not a bad sitcom plot, it's just a sitcom plot, I guess. <laughs> it, it's just one of those things that forces it's a lot of It's perfectly acceptable. I, I, it's a perfectly I think it's a, acceptable a, sitcom a true, plot. <laughs> it's a true neutral sitcom plot because it makes sense, because it's something that just happens to people and it forces a lot of strange conflicting emotions out of people. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah it's it, like, it leads to bizarre interactions that could not happen any other way. Yeah, in my case, it's actually quite interesting because we have a guest room that she that doubles as our office that we'd normally put her in, but mm -hmm. because our room is currently trashed with a bed frame that came That's to what us... what you're broken. using. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you saw the pictures I posted yeah. to the uh, talk. Yeah, uh, one of those, we opened it all up, and one of them was just completely smashed and totally unusable. Just Fucking one piece. Incredible. Yeah, so that room <laughs> is just full of that while I try and, like, Sequoia's, like, you know, getting, forcing them to send us a replacement while I try and salvage what's there with a bunch of L brackets. Uh, just, just to get something that, like, can support a human weight. Yeah, and I am a large human, so, you know, I, I want that support. Some large human weight. <laughs> I am a large human. Uh, so, but, oh, hey, it's Durth. <laughs> he's, he's a big skeleton in a big skeleton. robe. He's a big skeleton. That's my kind of guy. Uh, so that means, that means I'm pretty good in the other fold out for a mother-in-law while we're sleeping in the guest room, and yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. So, interesting evening. I like the best Gary entry. Uh, in one of the games that declares Dracula and Death to be best friends. Dracula and Death are best friends. I was about to say, it has never been debated whether or not they are best friends. It yeah, it's yeah. good when the canon so acknowledges it. <laughs> They're tag team partners. And that doesn't prove that you can't uh, be bitter, bitter, bitter enemies. See also the mega powers, but, you know, it helps. Mm. Uh, don't think too much about uh, the, the fraught relationship of the Mega Powers. <laughs> you should, though. You should think about it. <laughs> one, of, one of my favorite tweets of all time is, that, is, is, is a picture of the Mega Powers. You know, there's Hogan and, 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 um, and Macho Man hitting the exact same pose. <laughs> it, exact same pose in the poster, and my, my caption is, your parents two seconds after you catch them fighting in the garage. <laughs> oh, God! Fuck! <laughs> oh, God! That was so good. That's dark. <laughs> also, uh, fuck. The, the one, the one, uh, wrestling match that I've ever wanted to put on Our Heaven is, uh, the Mega Powers versus the Alliance to end Hulkamania. <laughs> uh, which is a match so bad that even people who do not watch wrestling can detect that it's terrible. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> how, I'm, I'm sorry, please tell me how it is bad. Okay, so the Alliance to End Hulkamania was a WCW stable that consisted of, like, all of their, like, villain, uh, all their villainous wrestlers at once. And the, the match was billed as a doomsday cage match. Which meant that there were three cages stacked on top of each other. And I was going to say that the win condition for 
Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage was that they escaped the cage, but that's never actually outlined. And in fact, there is a point where Bobby the Brain Heenan asks his co- his face co-commentator, hey, Shivani, how do you win this match? <laughs> and Shivani just has to try to change the subject. <laughs> but, uh, so it's three cages stacked on top of each other, but they're like chain link fence cages. So uh, it, they start at the top. And if they do any sort of actual strenuous physical activity, it will collapse and kill all of them. So they can't, and they don't. That's wonderful. I'm so glad. So so, Hogan and Macho Man just have to slowly escape the cage until you get to the bottom floor. There's now like 13 wrestlers in in one ring. Obscured by a chain link fence. It's impossible to tell what's going on. Uh, It's impossible for them to keep track of what everyone is doing. Everyone is, like, fucking up all of the scripted uh, spots in the match. Eventually, they escape the cage. The match, for some reason, doesn't end, so they go back into the cage and pin someone and then leave again. Oh, no. (laughs) This occurs over the course of, like, 30 minutes. That is incredible. I am so happy. It's such a bad match. It's so fucking stupid. The commentators, uh, because it was airing on the pay-per-view Uncensored 96, it was the main event of that incredibly dire pay-per-view. The commentators just keep screaming, it's on censor! It's, <laughs> it's so bad in such obvious ways that it's like the one thing I would ever consider, one pure wrestling match I would ever consider putting on Outer Heaven, just because no matter who you are, you can immediately tell that this sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. So yeah, I've been, I've been meaning to try to find a rip of that for years, because it would fill out a half-hour slot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Put that in with uh, Ali fighting Mr. Tooth Decay. Oh, God. Cause it could make something. Uh, could, could make something. Uh, make make a make a cast out of fixed fights. You could. You you you, you would be a, a, a hoot and a holler. Are those uh, workout videos that Masakatsu Funaki did? Um, in his hmm. in his pancreas video days, I mean his pancreas oh, days. Man. Yeah, they're, they're called uh, they're, they're called the hybrid body. <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> I seek the hybrid body. We all seek the hybrid body. Yeah, I'm, I'm the hybrid body. Oh no! Now, just 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 to like give you guys context my diseased brain immediately jumped to slender man also ran series uh the everyman hybrid hybrid oh yeah everyman hybrid yeah god what a, rem- what a memory oh, here it is i maintain that uh most of those series were actually very good and everyman hybrid actually kind of killed it in the uh, my final chapters that's good i will i will fight people on this marble hornets was good fuck you <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what's the... Oh, but yeah, oh, if, you, if you find it, go ahead and post a link in MMA chat, and we'll, oh, I'll make sure to get it onto the server. Yeah, I keep wanting oh. to, like, contribute to Outer Heaven, because Smiler's always like, I'll just fucking kill it, I'll let it die! <laughs> And I don't want that to happen. He's not gonna let it die. He doesn't. I know, it. I know, but like I understand it his frustrations, nice to... and I appreciate yeah. them. I don't mm. want, I don't want him to be frustrated. I want him to have shows he can show. <laughs> Thing is, all the shows I'm aware of are terrible for reasons that would not necessarily make good Outer Heaven content. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, like a single episode of The Rookie starring Nathan Fillon, uh, where. Where, God, you need to, like, I need to disclaim this without not making any of this up. Where a, um, a couple of millennials get so mad at their jobs that they go on an international crime murder spree. <laughs> I love Bonnie and Clyde. It's literally just the nobody wants to work anymore, the episode. <laughs> but... that's, what, uh, that's what people who still watch network TV want. <laughs> I mean, these shows are made, these shows are made for 60-year-olds, for 60-year-olds who believe exactly that. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they have to dress themselves in the, like, trappings 
of something that's like aware, but it is in fact current year. But they are absolutely made for sixty-year-old boomers who don't know how to use the computer. <laughs> God, I, I hope every single episode begins with that bit from Lane. Present day, present <laughs> time. <laughs> that would be so good. God, that would be perfect. We can uh, we can fully reincorporate the opening to the opening to Mighty Number no. Nine. It is the present day. <laughs> It is the present day. Um, okay, Gagawa, have you fought right the right boss right. that everyone says is bullshit yet? I really want to see this. If not yet, fuck Alamoth. I don't Alamoth. know what it is. Uh, fuck Alamoth? I, I, I want you to fuck Alamoth. Gal like Alucard just walking towards whatever the fuck a Galamoth is and just sort of like adjusting his belt buckle with like a grim look of determination. Like, well... Let's do this. You're gonna, you're, gonna learn, you're gonna learn so much when we reach Galamoth. <laughs> Time to clap them cheeks. I, I don't mind uh, that I died in a hail shower because that was insane. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was pretty great. It. That was awesome. I like that. Let us go out the evening for pleasure. <laughs> like that was Man, this... kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> this, this account has some of the sickest sickest old Pancrase videos I've ever seen. You talking about uh, Kangogi Road? Uh, how is it pronounced? No, this is this is someone different. Polly Vandevort. And oh, with a name like that, I suspect that, that they may be legitimately Dutch. Yeah. Probably are. Yeah, they have they have a Hans Nyman uh, they have a Hans Nyman highlight video. This is one hundred this is five hundred percent the Dutch. This <laughs> is <laughs> the Dutchest individual who has ever lived. <laughs> The human being still still yearning for the period when Australia was called New Holland. <laughs> Damn, now I'm thinking about how um, uh, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk takes place explicitly in New in Amsterdam. In New Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. no, that owns. Um, it has like a bunch of like elements of New York and like Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. I gotta check this shit out. Yeah, it's just that radio. Just that radio three. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I love it. If I, I absolutely, I absolutely adore it. It is extremely my shit. It is in that rare category of games that were made for exactly one person, and that one person is me. <laughs> nice. Other people are allowed to enjoy it. I encourage other people to enjoy it. But that game was made with like just a big old list of thing beats wants in a video game. <laughs> Uh, and it runs on everything. Everyone, the guy who calls himself Beat is in the Jet Grind Radio. <laughs> that's the, that's, yeah, the, no, that's right? the real, the, that's what se separates people who know the real lore. That is a Jet Grind <laughs> Jet Net Radio reference. <laughs> yeah. Let's Man. all contemplate De La Jet Set Radio. <laughs> I'm looking for that. That was just that, that was just of... um uh, the people in um uh, that, was that was just, just the uh, American Sega version going, ported back to Japan. <laughs> so that was just Sega going. You know what? It is terribly unfair that the Japanese audience did not get Rob Zombie. We should did fix that. Did not get that. Rob Zombie in that one extra level we added. <laughs> yeah. But which is more important? Dragula. Rob Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> the monsters are cool. What am I of uh? One of my favorite GDQ moments ever was the Jet Set Radio speedrun, PC version. And he said, okay, now this is RNG dependent. If we don't get this, runs over, runs dead, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then immediately Dragula starts playing, and he just screams, yes, we got it! <laughs> Scream in the back of my Dragula! No, no, what's this? What, what, what game has Rob Zombie in it? Just the radio. The every, original. Game, every game from that area has Rob Zombie in it. But, um, <laughs> I had no just idea. The radio, the radio has in fact Rob have Dragula. Yeah, huh. yeah there's yep. some, there were additions made to the English version soundtrack, and one of them was Dragula. That's incredible. Yeah, I love it. I, I love that. Also, that. Um, one of the selectable, um, uh, one of the selectable uh, uh, tags, because like the game has like a million tags. And nobody ever, I never ever messed with them because it's like not interesting to just mm -hmm. fuck around with like tag selection. One of the like bonus tags is the cover of American Music the Strip 2. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yes. In like incredibly like super crunch, super pixel compressed glory. Radio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uninformed. Uh, Goggle Bob. This is the, um, uh, this is the album cover 
of American made music to strip to. American made music to strip to. I fucked it up. It's just, I mean, not just American music to strip to, it's American <laughs> made music to strip to. Very important. Uh, I just dump this and yell. Am I gonna make oh, sex that. two screenshots? No, I'm not. <laughs> Everyone gets to appreciate this. Everyone gets to see this shit. Oh, that was the censored version. Here's the proper version. <laughs> oh yeah, there's also some uh, Guitar Vader tracks in there, which is pretty rad. <laughs> Mixed Master there we go. That's more like it. That's the one that's actually a Jet Set Radio. She's naked in that one. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Professional murder music. Yeah, you can tell this is a bad Photoshop job on the <laughs> censored one. Yeah, seriously. I'm surprised you didn't put the uncensored one in sex two screenshots. I didn't uh, didn't think to. <laughs> Hello, Cal Scrub. Yo. Hey, Kelly. Are we good What's day? Welcome. To answer what, what the question that you asked me in DM, yes, I will get you an invite code as soon as it refreshes. You will be on nice. uh, first in line. Also, this is yeah. This look this looks pretty upside down to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is upside down, Castle. <laughs> It's the what else? Yeah. Right Sorry. Very hmm? music to script to. There it is. There it is, folks. Yep. In, in all its glory. Black and white. <laughs> well, technically green. <laughs> <laughs> Print the legend. Tranquilo. <laughs> In the back of my Dragula. One of the one of the all time great music videos. Mm -hmm. I just got a YouTube recommendation that was just the words Matt Pat's wife left him, <laughs> and I'm just staring at it. It's six <laughs> seconds long. <laughs> I don't think I'll click it. I I don't I would not, it. because it will, it will well, make I the, despise the algorithm Pat. think you want I, more <laughs> map. I don't. I don't necessarily. I don't want to make the algorithm think that. And also, I'm okay with not finding out uh, his the depths of his personal tragedy. I assume that there's someone just editing shit together. I, I don't fucking know, and I'm not going to find out. <laughs> oh man, this is. I this don't is have the best workout, but I have restraint here today. Uh, what, what's this got? What's this? What's this, Avi? Oh, this is uh, this is a video of Ma of Masakazu Funaki um, putting uh, what it would appear to be a couple of just utterly bland Japanese spokesmodels through like the gentlest cardio workout ever uh, ever recorded. It is it is very odd. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna survive Galma off this one. I don't know. Just... Don't have really oh, is that Galma? <laughs> that is big that boy. is one very powerful furry. You have the goddamn any barrel of the bracelet. Absolutely broken combinations. Yeah, no, I'll come back later. Alright, yeah, like, guard shield, shield rod, barrel bracelet. Chris, Chris Agrim. Yeah, well, Chris yeah, Agrim is just everything dies. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves Chris Agrim, man. You just, you just hitting shit. Shit be. I if he gets God, that back, reminds but... me of that reminds me of how like one of the things that they do in Lords of Shadow 2 to try to be like hey here's re remember this Castlevania fan that like destroyed my brain because of how stupid it was <laughs> is that like the the twist of that game turns out to be that in order to defeat Satan Alucard uh, put Dracula into like a false death for like a thousand years or whatever and he did it but he like pulls out a sword and says this is Chrysagrum and like in like proclaims that that is a weapon that can do that and it's like there's no reason for that I'll be right like, back, there, there's no reason for that to have been there except as a reference to remember that sword that was really strong in Symphony of the Night <laughs> Ooh, I remember this that's pretty much I do it. remember seeing that I mean, the whole but... stupid Mirror of Fate plot was also just 100% Oh yeah, mind-boggling me, Dom. To be like, well, uh, we've got some Castlevania names here, we're gonna smush them all together. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, is this Lords of Shadow? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, there's, uh, there's one, like, uh... There's one, uh, like, the thing that makes Lords of Shadow 2 the most redeemable of those is that it's completely fucking insane. <laughs> it doesn't make Patrick Stewart say a lot of wacky things. <laughs> yeah, he says a lot of, uh... But the, the, my favorite thing is that I could honestly describe the final boss of that with the, like, insane kernel ramblings. I hear it's amazing when the famous purple stuffed worm flap jaw space with the tuning fork does a rub blink on Harakiri Rock. Because <laughs> it's just uh, like, you are mostly fighting on a flying purple flap jaw space worm and fighting <laughs> Satan while on top of it. That's incredible. That is... All... Those were real words that... That, wasn't that, that, is the, that is the final boss of uh, Lords of Shadow 2. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, my wife was telling me about her um, uh, plans to prank her, um, uh, her like, out-of-country team when they come to America in a few mm -hmm. weeks. And I keep shooting her down because all of her pranks are... Ha ha, you thought you just lost a job. Yeah, that's always <laughs> a bad like, no. prank. <laughs> no, right. I mean, that's a kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 only man, in the sense of, like, like, oh, like, I am no, no longer this... having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sure got me there. Woo. <laughs> yeah, you sure got me there. And she's like, well, I could, I could send them all to the wrong room and then ping them a bunch of times. Why aren't you here? The meeting starts in two sit in two minutes. And I'm like, no. The just, problem is that like any of those from someone like, with like ring... at their desk, something. God. Yeah, like anything that like implies your job is at risk or you are, uh, you know, you are doing poorly at it is going to just be so miserable for them. You need to just yeah. accept that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's you said they're an international my, team. I think the, the ideal way to deal with anybody who's traveling is to make to trick them into thinking they're in the completely wrong country. <laughs> <laughs> like, they got off the plane and they really thought they were in America, but then just immediately start, like, randomly combining different ethnicities. Like, Start speaking Italian. I feel like but it's really hard food. not to end up racist doing that. <laughs> oh yeah, no, not racist. Just be be like yeah, randomly much. mixing things. It's like no, no, you don't understand. But you've got to do just like you, you've got to hit her with just the, like you gotta, you gotta just hit, like uh, hit them all with uh, the fucking Taco Bell Chihuahua accent. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> just get it. <laughs> but while you give wow, them Italian, it's possible. possible. <laughs> I, I feel like the only the, the only way to like truly sell that is to like get to and this would take this is like unrealistic is to like deck out the entire airport so that all indicators point that you just landed in Quebec. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Speaking of, speaking of bad sitcom plots. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I, I can't, I can't think of complex. I, I can't think of both of them lately. Yeah, I, I can't think of any good pranks. Like I just, I don't have, I don't have pranks. I, I feel like the entire notion of pranks has left me behind. It's just like, ah, I don't. Know yeah. This in me. <laughs> it's like, what if you, what, what if, what if you trap, what, what if you trap him in a, in a hydraulic powered <laughs> drop forge? And maybe think what if you hit him with the hydraulic done, press? Um, uh... yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Have you ever seen the movie Saw? <laughs> <laughs> what if, what, would you like to play a game? <laughs> what if what if they walk in the door, you yell cup check, and then someone unrelated to you or the job strikes them strikes them in the groin? We just lost Cal Scrub. I'm sorry, Cal Scrub. Kelly. I'm sorry, Cal Scrub. <laughs> no, Cal Scrub. Um she has done like, you know, uh, office pranks of the much more benign variety. Like yeah. uh fucking like, you know, like, um, uh, one time she snuck in there on the weekend and gift-wrapped their desks and everything on their desks. <laughs> that's fun. Like, that's, that's the sort of shit that's like, yeah, no, that's good, clean fun. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody afraid they're losing their job or anything with that. It's yeah. just, you know, haha, I got you. I mildly inconvenienced you in a way that's yeah. objectively pretty funny. Um, but, like, you can't really do that. Like, like you know, they don't have a desk or a presence in the office because they're literally visiting from the Mexico office. 
Like, it just doesn't there. work. <laughs> Convince yeah, them I'm, that I'm, it's I'm... like some American holiday that they'd have no idea about. Oh yeah, it's some uh, it's Castile Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, make it sound Wait, you guys don't celebrate Bastille? You guys don't celebrate the classic American holiday, Bastille Day? <laughs> Next you're going to tell me you don't uh, celebrate celebrate the foiling of the gunpowder plot. <laughs> I see no reason why... Oh, I always celebrate that plot. I always watch V for Vendetta that day, because that movie, movie <laughs> fucking rules. Well, my computer's been acting up. I'm going to try to look at this shit. <laughs> Come back! <laughs> yeah. Are you no. safe? Cal Scrub, no! Oh, I'll be back. I miss Cali Scrub. I miss you, Cal. Anytime Cal Scrub's gone, we should all just be saying, Where's Cal Scrub? <laughs> is Cal Scrub? This is the thing I think a lot. Where's Cali Scrub? I often, I often just in the middle of my day go, Where's Cal Scrub? It would Sometimes be so much better if Cal Scrub was here. Yeah. Sometimes I, 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 I comfort dying animals for the side of the road, telling them they're going to get better and they'll play with Cali Scrub all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Symphony of the Night is a crazy game because I've played it so many times but I forget what equipment I have when if I take a particular route. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, can I even do this fight with just like jumping and cut, cut, cutting thing? It's like, can I? No, you can't. It's pretty much. It's these, not allowed. These flies just were never meant to be in high definition. It's true. They're just little boys, little things. Man, I'm watching hell of, uh... Beelzebub was the devil for the sun. <laughs> for I, me. I, for... Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm just, <laughs> you not. These days I'm watching hell of, uh... What's it called? These days I'm watching hell of, uh... Fucking, uh, the cooking shows on YouTube. Mm hmm like They're always relaxing. <laughs> always. Always. Oh. Homemade, uh, homemade, uh, I gotta say, homemade fucking chicken tikka masala looks, like, completely worth the hassle. Oh, yeah, I mean, chicken tikka masala is one of the, one of the most wonderful things you can make out of, make as food, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> about the Lord of Flies is unpleasant. I love how he's <laughs> oh, yeah. fight as a drifter. He basically show up and uppercut him and call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> he's just got a lot more capacity to rise upward while doing damage. <laughs> yeah. 100% agree. <laughs> oh my god. Hell yeah. No nah, man, Richter, Richter, Richter fucking whips ass in some of the night. Yeah, I, I mention this every time it comes up, but, like, my dream impractical ROM hack would be to give Rondo Richter his Symphony of the Night capabilities. Oh, God. Yeah, utter impossibility, but... Uh, but it would be no. really fun for, like, the 20 minutes it would take to finish the game. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. It would, just, it would just completely whip ass. I love it. Remember where they put BLs above in uh which, which game? Was it Legacy of Darkness? Uh are you talking about one of the 3D ones or Yeah, one of the 3D ones where there's a super boss. I remember apps uh I think you're thinking of Lament of Innocence that has like the super boss BLs above looking thing. Oh, okay. Well then there you go. Yeah, because it was Legion in uh Curse of Darkness or whatever. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? 
Yeah, we can hear you now. Hear you okay, now. Uh, well, Discord can't hear me or see me or uh, I thought I closed it and I'm not seeing it in like the open like things list. So yeah, probably just you probably need, just need to open it up again. Yeah, yeah. I did that. Uh, I mm. I closed it and then I heard you guys on the headset and I was like, wait, what? You no, should you should probably not. just reboot, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not yeah. gonna do that. Okay, so I will be back in a few moments. Discord. I think I, I love I, one of the things that has made my life, um, I guess, easier. In, in, in terms of living with a computer is, you know, when, when, you're, when your mindset changes from like, oh no, something on this computer could break to like, something on this computer is always breaking. <laughs> something is always fucked on, in this machine. And the only, the only question is what is fucked and is it fucked in such a way that you will notice? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's just, basically it, my entire it, job, not gonna lie. Is it, is it <laughs> fucked in such a way that I actually need to care about it beyond rebooting it until it stops doing it? Yeah. I always hate it when a client's like, well, it's still broken. It's like, yeah, but you can use it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. You, it's broken in a way that will never affect you. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry You're about it. It's your machine cool. is never going to stop being broken. It, it can't stop. It... <laughs> Like, this is how computers work. It's yeah. terrible. I mean, the the perfectly sad thing about computers is that, like, I said this ten years ago, and it's only gotten worse, but the number of things that it make your computer go, just like as a basic concept, are all programs that are, like, designed by different people for ultimately very specific situations and in a manner of speaking have Often never adversarial to each other yeah have <laughs> never been designed to work with anything else <laughs> like it is something that it is a wonder when something actually does continue working when you just do one other thing it's like you, you look at those you, you you look at any any software development shop for five minutes and you realize like not yeah but they're not they're not sitting around fucking fucking asking like hey what's gonna happen if we run this and like some shitty relational database from 2004 <laughs> like uh, and and, and they're, it turns out they're using some of the same services and it ends up it ends up completely fucking weird no they're not doing that my god they can barely get the thing working working consistently internally they just, they just any program that claims to be able to import data automatically from anything else, even if it's a program that's existed since, like, you know, 1997, like, just the idea that you can import, like, a frickin' CSV file, you just thank your lucky stars, it worked once. <laughs> One of the yeah. one of the things that you just immediately learn when you're actually writing software is like reading files is just a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like yeah. you, you you basically just need to sit there and like promise promise your fucking program from word one. I promise data will only ever come in this order. I promise. <laughs> like, I it's mean like... it's it's a weird thing to say, but I there are a lot of things about computers that, like, in a manner of speaking, I learned how basic things work as part of my degree. And even though, in a manner of speaking, my degree is now years and years out of date, like, you know, things still work off of the same basis. Yeah. That said, same principles underlying. Right. That said, just the basics of essentially converting video files between different formats, if you were to ask me the exact details of how that works as opposed to, like, just the basic <laughs> fucking sorcery. what's going on there, like, I, I have no early idea. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I remember, yeah. I remember taking a programming class that involved like, you know, making some simple programs, and one of them was a game. And someone was like, "Oh, I want to add music to this. Can I do that?" And he's like, "I mean, you can. I won't give you extra credit for it because that's a waste of your time." <laughs> <laughs> I 
And it was basically like, I can't help you work out how to do that anyway, because like making sound ge sound generation and like playback is a huge pain in the ass, and I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshing honesty. And wholly accurate. I mean, I am definitely of the, the computer generation that, like, you know, you told me you had an amazing Super Nintendo emulator, and it, but it had absolutely no sound support. I said, that's fine. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I remember that time, uh, it was, this is out in Outer Heaven, but it was just uh, the start of Final Fantasy VI uh, on, like, a super old emulator. Where every mm -hmm. graphic was yeah, like just B zero point one three or something. <laughs> yeah, just incredible. Thirty minutes of just like the most amazing graphical and sound glitches anyone ever saw. <laughs> Frankly, I feel like that's the way the game was meant to be played. Not many people <laughs> playing it on like hardware accurate machines or pixel remasters are missing out. Uh, what what game? All of them, forever. <laughs> We're talking about um, uh, shitty broken emulators. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. ZSDS. That's the one. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, here it is. It's uh, Mullet Mad Jack. I don't think it's out yet, but it will be soon. I remember you were talking about that one. What's what's that one it's like, about? It's like a it, it, it's like a um, first person Hotline Miami. Kind of, oh, kind that one! Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Like you're, a, you're a, uh, you're like a mercenary on on what am I? You're you're like a mercenary, but you're like a streamer mercenary, and so <laughs> you only got sixty seconds to live, and the only way to the only way to extend that is to get hearts on by people on the stream. <laughs> so you, you gotta get the hearts going. Keep sending die. me bits, or I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yup. <laughs> Oh, so you've got effectively yeah. like a few seconds to to you know to to kill every enemy in the game. I'm into it. I do enjoy like in a matter of speaking, high adrenaline games that like this this playthrough will end in three seconds. <laughs> yeah, we've made a crank video game for the streamer generation. <laughs> All right, time time to go have the most fan servicey fight in this game. Ooh, fan servicey, you say? <laughs> you get to see Not the stars guy. of Netflix's Castlevania. <laughs> oh man, I love the stars of Netflix's Castlevania. You don't get to see the weird vampires that won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> No, those aren't the stars. Those are the guys that are just in Netflix's Castlevania, so much to my chagrin. <laughs> Need me a better description? No, you're you're completely accurate. No, that's 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 completely accurate. Hmm? I love the reverse castle just having random life max ups and just places that seem to make no sense. Just an excuse for there to be something there. <laughs> yeah. But there's just so many other things that they could put there. But how many of them would be better than the life max? Well, yeah. All of them. Life max ups are ideal because they're they're good things to get. But missing any individual one doesn't mean much. I mean, that's kind of why I, in a weird way, in the old Castlevania versus Metroid debate, like, I feel like you get a more pure gaming experience with the Metroid games because, like, all the pickups, by and large, are things like missile tanks or super missiles or whatever. And if you go back to an earlier part of the game and find a secret you missed at that time, you're always happy to get a missile power-up. Whereas in this game, you can go back to an earlier spot and find something you missed, and it's like a plus five sword when you're already equipped with like a plus 25 sword. I kind of prefer it 
because I don't want to feel like, like, I don't want to feel like, oh, I'm missing out if I don't scour everything. And also, I honestly don't care. After a certain point, I don't care how many missiles I have. <laughs> I mean, that was part of the reason. Did it start with uh, Dread, or did they also do it in uh, Samus Returns, whatever that one is actually called? But the, uh, the, like, quarter of an E-tank is something that pisses me off to no end. <laughs> The order of an E-Tank? Quarter. quarter of an E-Tank. Like a oh, one-fourth oh, okay. of an E-Tank. Like e a peak of heart. <laughs> I, I see. I don't think Samus Returns does that, but it's been a minute. Yeah, it definitely did it in Dread, and like, I was like, oh, screw you guys. <laughs> this should not be all. I really fucking was like Dread, though. Was that the yeah, boss? No, it's the, um, uh, by and large, it was the, the, the fucking skeleton snake? With the floating ox heads? Was, was that the boss you were hyping up? It is I'm... our... Oh, sorry. What? <laughs> no, Samus the, the boss we're hyping a... up we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, Samus okay, and the Dread. Um, are they, like, the best uh, search action games to have the 360 aiming, or is there a better one that has that? Just is that there another well. one? Also, I won't accept the phrase search action. <laughs> rephrase. <laughs> Bullshit. You know what? You're gonna have to fucking deal with it. I- what- what is a Metroid? What is a Vania? And you're not allowed to talk about video games. Like- I Kinda mean, like a roguelike. Why would we not talk about video games in a conversation? I mean, you about can't talk about games. existing IPs, you have to describe, like, what- I think the term Metroidvania is fucking dumb. Uh, I think, Church like- is even worse. <laughs> I, okay, is okay, terrible, we'll use- we'll use a term I heard on a comment. right we'll there. We'll, we'll use a term- describe Snatcher, just so we're We'll on call it Metroidvania and, I guess- you can call it whatever you want. I, you know, there was I'm not a term typing up my lexicon. That I've only seen I'm gonna one. call it my dick. Let me, let me, <laughs> Damn. Can we play a game? Just when you think it's just when you think you've reached the end, you're only halfway there. <laughs> uh, and it gets harder. There was, there was a comic oh, head yes. game. Yes. God damn. All right, we're listening. Uh, we're listening. I'm sorry for getting your stream demonetized. Um, I was gonna say again is the boss is here now. Oh. Uh, Skeletons. Oh, it is silly. Uh, yeah, Skeletons. There was a- no, Oh, buddy. yeah, I can't wait for when this happens in Season 6 of the anime. That's gonna be so fucking hype. It's never. You like, just, 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 just allow that drink to die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, what the fuck is it gonna say again regarding, um, the god thing? Uh, oh yeah, there was a Comic Cat uh, showcase stream I watched once of all the different games that were being made there, and they called the the Metroid Fading Games Exploration Platformer. And I've never seen that term used again, but I like it. I think it describes both right. games pretty well. Sure. I think that the search for a perfect word is a fool's errand. I think the search for a perfect action is uh, speaks louder than words. Is that Corpse Trevor? It's awesome. Yes. I love Corpse, corpse Trevor. Obama. If Silpha is left alone, she will sum it up as Undead Trevor. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. I just had my burrito. It was good. Yes, I, I could hear temporarily you were further away from the mic. <laughs> Dracula's Curse Trophy Earned. I lean away from the mic to earn a burrito, to eat a burrito. But yeah, um, Exploration Platformer. <laughs> Is what I don't see very often, but yeah. Anyways, are Samus Returns and Dread the best ones to have 360 aiming? Because I imagine all the other ones I can't have think it. of a single other one. Yeah, I just yeah, remembered I've not, another I've one. I've not seen any others. And I enjoy my Metroidvania, so I don't can't think of any other ones. I I think Guacamelee kinda did, but that's only with like grappling enemies. I was gonna say that is 100% like a beat 'em up style action Metroidvania. <laughs> Also, I'd probably take Samus Returns and Dread over it. Does... Yeah, no, I, I would too. I mean, I've played both of them. I, I, would... I don't even dislike Guacamelee. But... I was about to say, I, yeah, I, yeah, no. I would put it in top tier, but it is hard to beat some of the best mentor games. It, it is it is, it is, an alright game. It's pretty it's a, good. So it's a perfectly... It's, it's a pretty Cromulent. good game. Cromulent. Could use a little less memes, but it, otherwise it's pretty Cromulent. That's, that's I don't like the games. I don't give a fuck. I was gonna say I enjoy games when they like 
sort of dare to have humor. And also, it's a weird thing to say, but people complain about, like, games being dated by their memes. I freaking love going back to older media and being like, oh yeah, that was funny at that time. <laughs> it's more of a problem when it's like, oh, this, it wasn't funny even at the time. Fair enough, yes. But there, there are definitely, like, thanks to, uh... Uh, the podcast that Fanboy Master and I are now doing. I, I started rewatching Bojack Horseman. Oh, and man. I think it's. Wait, you guys are actually doing that? Huh? <laughs> he's, making, he's, I, he's continuing the running joke. Yes, I am joking. That just every okay, time we start talking about it. We could do podcast, that. Like, oh, we could do that. Though. You really could. Oh, God. <laughs> I stop you. I mean, I would like, I would like keep an eye on Discord, and every time I saw just you two in there, I would barge in and start screaming about Aqua Teen will never be canceled. <laughs> I mean, that that could be, that would work. <laughs> we could compare yeah, honestly, episodes yeah, of Bojack episodes that. of Aqua Teen. <laughs> Very different tones here. Hold on. Um, <laughs> no, this is a all right, but Bojack anyway. Aqua Teen Ao3. No. No. I will not accept. <laughs> like, I, I will find a way to kick you from the call if you start reading anything out of that. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm looking for myself now. <laughs> okay, well, as long as you keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but as I was saying, there's a, there's a running... Starting with the second season of BoJack Horseman, they, they do the flashback episodes, and the joke is like... Always that somebody. Oh, the, the, the joke is just that, like, they, they don't use anything. It's just like, ah, uh, perfectly 90s song. Yes. <laughs> and somebody's reading a magazine that's kind of like, it's 1992, and they kind of make a point of it. Like, you know, a character is very clearly doing that on screen. But if you pay attention, starting in, in season two, <laughs> characters are randomly in the present reading things that say what year it is. This is just a part of the Bojack world. Right, they just read a magazine that says, like, it's 2017 or whatever, but the, uh, the one episode, which I remember was season two because, uh, what's her name, the, the owl, um... Wanda. Wanda, thank you. The owl is reading the magazine that says what year it is, and it just says, is this dress gold or blue with that stupid <laughs> That's the cover of the magazine. It, it also makes perfect sense for her, since she's trying to catch up on what the fuck happened oh, when yeah, she was in a coma for 30 years. She would be reading a magazine that tells you what year it is. <laughs> but I, I just My love favorite, that. Like, it's like, oh yeah, gags. that dress thing, I remember that. <laughs> and of course that was, yeah, like, current when that. that joke was there. <laughs> Uh, what were you saying? Uh, one of my favorite dumb gags in um uh in Doctor McNinja of all things is like when um uh, Chuck Goodrich finally makes it to um uh to um uh to to the past. <laughs> he um uh, immediately grabs the newspaper and it just says it just has in like second coming text at the top. It's March third, nineteen eighty five. That's it. Tuesday. Write your own fucking uh, <laughs> headline. <laughs> Are you just trying to see if you can get behind that door without actually uh, No, I just it? completely slipped on my controller, but it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. I mean, there are just random <laughs> spells that, like, I'm trying to do one thing and I just wind up doing another thing. There's a bunch of out-of-bounds glitches in this game, right, fanboy? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I, yeah, but I think I watched like the PSP. Game. I think this is like the like this basically. version. Uh, some of them have been patched. Yeah. But in in general, if we are speaking just specifically of Symphony of the Night in general, yes, there are tons of out of bounds glitches. Okay. Cool. Yeah. What what's like the highest map percentage anyone has ever gotten? Cause... It's theoretically infinite. There's ways to trick it into nice. letting you just keep catching, collecting the same essentially sets of map. But... Oh, was I gonna say something about that? My my brain has just chased out any any thoughts with back in the nineties. I was in a very famous TV show. <laughs> uh, that's right, you were. We all watched it. It was the um, uh, it was the fanboys big time TV time show. I'm more man than a horse. 
Or I'm more horse than man. What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole point. Well, well I know, but there's mean. literally one episode where a character calls it out, like, what's up? Oh, yeah, I forgot mean? about that. <clears throat> I was just thinking about, like, uh, I was mentioning this in another chat, but I was just thinking about the, the sheer brutality of, like, w like, right before The View from Halfway Down, when, like, the, the whole reason that episode happens is Bojack's, like, self-image being shattered by realizing that he absolutely could have uh, stuck by Herb and still gotten everything he wanted. And that this, like, decades-long delusion that... <clears throat> uh, that he had, that there was nothing he could have done has been completely shattered. That yeah. is a just, just ridiculous number of tiny little imps harassing you. What the hell, and then man? They drop stuff, which is a rarity. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen those actually drop anything. They're just irritating. They poke you, and then Alucard gets pissed and starts attacking. It's very upset. Remember how they cut the feature that was supposed to be in this game of, uh, of Al finding Alucard's room and being able to decorate it? And then well, I mean, they essentially into... brought that back for... They literally brought it back for Harmony of Distance, but it didn't make any sense anymore. Right, I was about to say, it's like, the idea was that Alucard, who would have lived with his found dad... Found his maybe. own room and was like, ah, I can put things in this room. But instead, Juiced is just like, oh, hey, an empty room. I guess I'll decorate it. <laughs> I mean, it's... I hate that, like, I appreciate this, but, like, uh, Alucard's room is easily perhaps one of the best moments in Netflix Castlevania. <laughs> because it's Didn't just Dracula... Yes. He got out or to die. <laughs> it, it's just Dracula. <laughs> it's just Dracula. It's just Dracula. <laughs> now, now, Beat is just haunting. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh, he's been I transformed am, uh, into I a robot. Out. <laughs> yeah, you roboted out. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. It's Bad internet tonight. You were saying about Alucard's room. Is the internet ever good though? So yeah, um, uh, the fight just suddenly stops in Alucard's room because Dracula's like, holy shit, this is your room. I, I decorated this for you when you were born, and now I'm trying to kill you, and I hate it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a great moment. It's, it's just... Yeah, no, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I do have to say, I don't... There's, I, I, it's a weird thing to say. But Symphony of the Night is definitely when um, they started going in the direction of making the Castlevania series much more cohesive than it had been, rather than, like, every third game is just Simon Belmont again, and we're just going to deal with that. Or, hey, remember Dracula? What if we did Dracula? But yeah, no, he's <laughs> cool, right? We're all, we all like Dracula. And I don't Dracula. know how I feel about making the uh, the whole maudlin Lisa thing with, you know, Alucard's mother and Dracula being upset Trouble about... the soul of my mother no more. But yeah, and it's like there's this whole, like, tragic backstory to the guy who... His whole deal is that he eats people. <laughs> and... <laughs> he doesn't eat people anymore. <laughs> He eats people. That's he was literally do. drinking a guy at the beginning of this. He just put it in a wine glass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife chimed in from across the room because we're stuck in the same room. I normally do this in a different room. Uh, yeah. That she does not like Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Given the opportunity, she would not hang out with Dracula. Are, are, but here, here's Dracula. the question. Are there any vampires your wife would like? Are there any vampires you do like, Sequoia? She's, she says she likes her blood in her body, so no. Yeah, see, that that's mm. and that's kind of the thing. <laughs> like, on a basic level, mm. like, you know, Dracula does not play well with others. Yep. She, I feel like, uh, she, I feel she, like clarified, well... she clarified that she's not a tryhard. <laughs> Fair. 
Oh, Maybe a Twi Hard. Apologies. Oh, as in, as in a Twilight uh, Die Hard. Yeah, Twilight Die Hard. <laughs> Twilight Die Hard crossover. Um, that no. just. No, I'm not. I'm not. Don't, that's the end don't of that. let it happen. Don't let it happen. <laughs> I, I'm not, it's okay. Do not whisper it into existence. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say again is um okay. Castlevania Dracula, not really gonna hang out with. I imagine Hotel Transylvania Dracula would be okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Jonathan, you are begging my. I daughter. saw all three of those movies in a fugue state on a 17-hour plane ride. This is where I tell you there's more. <laughs> <laughs> I I I do not I am not emotionally prepared for that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to break this news to you. Can we can we talk about the time that apparently there was an entire group of people on the internet that thought the invisible man from uh Hotel Transylvania logically had to be like a sexy awesome dude and then they finally did an episode where they revealed what he looked like. That was the fourth movie, I upset. think. <laughs> I do like that you referred to a whole ass movie as an episode. <laughs> I feel Basically like that's... I mean, it, yeah, no, it, let's it, let's call it what it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was gonna say again is... Why does... Why does the PSP version... Okay, I actually do understand why the PSP version would still have the CD room. Because U of D's were still discs. I'm just saying, like, why would it still, like, is it just there now for nostalgia's sake? Cause... I mean, they're not going to remove it. I was about to say, the castle kind of falls apart if you take away its load-bearing hallways. <laughs> <laughs> Literal load-bearing in the, uh, yeah. But, I mean, isn't the castle already kind of, like, non-Euclidean? Yeah, but you wouldn't just remove shit out of it. It serves purposes other than tech now. Oh, I, I wasn't... Oh, okay, yeah, I guess... The CD room is kind of like a break from... Uh, yeah. Yeah, they also very clearly, like, distinguish the different sections of the castle, which... I mean, those of us who've been playing this game since the 90s take it for granted, but it is important to... It really looks like a new player, game. like... Yeah, and it really lets a new player know, like, oh, I'm making progress. Yeah. Oh, okay. You have reached a different level. Okay. And for the record, on my old-ass uh, television where I originally played this game, I absolutely was never able to make out the whole, like, CD motif. <laughs> like, I just hey, think this is a hallway. We gotta, we gotta load the next track from the CD, cause the music is being streamed that way. Remember, cut number one contains computer data, so please don't play it. You'll listen you to me probably anyway. won't listen to me, well, again. And then he brings out the hardest banger you ever heard in your life. Uh, that's Castlevania. Yeah. Yep. Did they ever explain, like, that was that, like, a dedicatedly cut song, or was that just, like, we were screwing around, we figured we'd put this on here? <laughs> I'd imagine there was probably a lot of cut music from this. There were entire cut sections, I think, and I think some of them yeah, were added into the, into the Saturn version or something. There are okay. new sections. There's not... It's not clear if they were based on any, like, actual discarded designs, or if they were just, like added in where places were supposed to be. Yeah, I, I seem to recall people doing the whole cutting room thing on uh, the original, original Symphony of the Night. There are indicators that the Saturn sections, like, it was clear there's, like, a connecting area heading you there, but they absolutely cut that out, and there's no real indication that, like... That was what was ever... added there had anything to do with what they were intending to put. What, right. what are the, have we already been to the exclusive Saturn sections yet, or...? Those are not in this. Yeah, we are not playing a Saturn version, and they never got anywhere but the Saturn version. Oh, I thought I thought it was like Playable Maria, where they ended up putting it in the PSP version also. The, playable yeah, no. Maria in the PSP version is a completely different Playable Maria than the Saturn version. Oh. You know, it's kinda like, how they keep re-releasing Mega Man 8 and they uh, only ever give us the PlayStation version even though the Saturn version had two Has whole Woodman other bosses you could find. And Cutman. 
Did they? Did they? Did they do really do that like twice? Uh, what re-release Mega Man Eight without the Saturn like, content? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Every every release. Yeah. Emulating a Saturn is a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I guess. It's that. no longer I, an unsolvable problem, but it's still a huge pain in the ass. The only company I really see doing it now is Sega, obviously, but yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's Even what, they like, are loath to do it if they can help it. Like, it's like, okay, guys, you want funny, uh, you want Fighting Circus, we'll give you the fi Fighting Circus support. I'm still thinking about, like, because now I'm thinking about that, like, promo image. That Oshima shared on Twitter for that like fighting circus game. You all have seen that, right? Yeah, I think so. Mm, yeah, I missed that one probably. Look at the look at these giant rotating beeps that are marauding goggle bones. I <laughs> like those guys. I like all the bones in this game. This game has quality bones. Nova skeletons are badass. Yeah. Uh, what's the second is um. I see that a lot. Skill team. What's now to Oshimi's persona on his Twitter profile picture? Do you do you know what I'll be or? Uh, probably not. Okay, because I I figured you like Sonic. I thought you'd know if his thing is like a character or. Be just oh, like the fast um, guy. <laughs> I just like the fast guy. I don't I don't think about it too hard beyond that. Um, are we gonna stream Super? What's are his you name? Stream Naruto? Super how you pronounce it? Naoto Oshima. Sadly, uh, okay. Superstar's right, like right. proper multiplayer campaign is not online. Yeah, I, I just asked if B was probably going to stream it when it comes out. Which one? That is Sonic not Superstar. a series character I'm aware of. As far as I'm concerned, that's his persona. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Good for him, though. What he, was being asked he, he about fucking made Sonic. He deserves to use his own persona on Twitter.com. He gets to do what that. Was, what was being asked about with Sonic Superstars, the new 2D one? Yeah, I asked oh, if... Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'll definitely play that. Yeah, if you, if uh, you need a co-op... If you need a co-op person, I, you know, I have car now. I can, I can come visit. <laughs> I think, um, uh, I think it'd be funnier if I made my wife do it. Oh, uh, yeah, really? It favorites. would... I, I've also what say from favorites? experience playing <laughs> from experience playing co-op with B, if you're not his wife, he might get extremely pissed off. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, the only co-op has seen the, a lot of chances I, to go bad. I've seen the <laughs> you want those games, right? And uh, the casino bit still sticks out of my head. The um. Uh... God, the um, uh, streams I did of um, uh, Sonic Classic Heroes, if incredible ROM hack, just an, easily one of my favorite ROM hacks of all time. Um, I did uh, with my wife and with Fanboy, uh, and the one with my wife ends in failure because we're playing on Metropolis and she does not play video games. Um, uh, is, you know, just adorable, right? And the one of Fanboy ends with me literally screaming, we aren't friends anymore, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, so, so how much, so how much I'm willing to put up with, uh, greatly depends on how married I am to you. <laughs> uh -oh. Understandable. <laughs> how wife with my guy. How green was my valley? My wife just said something. You think the... <laughs> but I haven't seen many people talk about, like, the Sonic Superstars, like, physics. I, I hope <laughs> I'm not that. The fucking... <laughs> fucking the Sonic Mania producer said that they seem to be accurate to Mania. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I mean, when does the game actually come out? Uh, About a month. Like, three days after or before oh. uh, Mario Wonder. Oh yeah, that that's gonna go well. <laughs> it'll probably do fine for them. That'll be that'll sell well for the next ten years. It'll, it's almost guaranteed to be a decent seller. Here's oh, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm sure it's not going to fail. It's just kind of like, why did you do this, guys? Listen, uh, <laughs> the elephant. Pattern. Listen, the elephant man is only going to be on Switch, but um, the Sonic Superstars is going to be on all of the major platforms. I'm gonna be real with you. 
the kind of person who's buying Sonic Superstars was probably the kind of person that had a Switch. Or, or they're on P but they might still buy it on PC though. PC, like, if you look at like platform splits, that is, you are you are pulling directly from people who are like the kind of person who cares about modifying their games. Extremely small niche. Why is the Sonic Generations Nexus so huge? Like relative to like like you can have a like a niche that feels huge, but it's still gonna be like. A, I, lo I love a, how these girls are called schmooze. Like You're a big, by Yellow Brick Road. A big, a, a fucking big modding community has a thousand people in it. <laughs> Wait, I just realized. Yeah, that's, that's an enormous modding community. The uh, the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road achievement. Let me see what that is, because it's for <sighs> defeating all of the Wizard of Oz themed characters here. Uh, is it in that specific room, or? I think it's just once they're all added to your beast tree. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I just uh, killed let's Tin Man, see. which was the last thing. Defeat all three of the denizens of Oz. But they're forgetting all the other Oz lore that L. Frank Bob wrote. Yeah, but those aren't in the game. I was gonna say that you can't yeah, kill in this game. Sorry. Oz Ozma gets to live. And the tick. What was that other guy? TikTok? Yeah. Repent Harlequin quite the TikTok. Man. Yeah. The jelly beans. Harlan Ellison was a real one. Probably the realist. Weird ass old man. That's how you know he that's how you know he was legit. I remember Ron I Alec pissed Arf off Arf a bunch Arf. of people on talking time super bad by just talking um uh, by just sharing my honest opinions on Harlan Ellison. <laughs> he seemed like uh, a piece of shit. He wrote some good uh, science fiction, that's my strongest opinions. <laughs> Uh, when he died, I just posted, oh, so his third Dangerous Visions finally coming out? Oh, the last Dangerous Visions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I remember someone said, like, why do you argue so much with people? And he, and he was like, you can't let him get away with it. No, and that's I'm why like, you can't let him get away with having never finished the last Dangerous Visions. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. I'm like, making Sar true best. <laughs> what is the current release date on that? I assume, since he put in his will to burn it upon his death, uh, never. <laughs> Planned for publication in September of 2024. Yeah, that will happen. J. Michael Straczynski <laughs> took over as editor. He will actually put something out. Good for him. JMS like is also a cool guy. <laughs> What's that, uh, Gogba? I, I just like Straczynski, you know, that guy. JMS. <laughs> yeah, J. Michael Straczynski. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, that seems, that seems like it's done. They're just essentially waiting for the, uh, the, it's, uh, publication date at this stage. <laughs> I also like how the reverse library I think one of my, like, favorites... Works. The most useless pickups, and of course, the Chris again. <laughs> uh, like, they didn't even bother to put a boss back in. I do like the backgrounds in here with all the like toppled um, uh, bookcases in the cement that just passed by. That's a nice touch. Appreciating, I like, so how you can tell how fucking old Last Dangerous Visions were, was by some of the, like, names of the authors who had stories that were supposed to be in it. One of the stories that was published elsewhere uh, posthumously for one of these authors was written by a man named Manly Wade Wellman. Which is... <laughs> All just, right. it, it sounds like the fakest name ever. Uh, but Wikipedia only lists other, uh, like, pen names for him. It doesn't, well, it, it, it seems like Manly Wade Well, Like, wh what I'm saying is, the other pen, like, the other names listed here, uh, those, those are also, those are pen names. Manly Wade Wellman seems to have been his actual name. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Levi Crow. Dude, try Crowe. some things out. What do you want? Gan, T. Field, Hampton Wells, and Wade Wells. Wade Wells Lower feels like a name you would know because that's not who he was. This is Manly Wade Wellman. Okay, I, I was I was joking that like um, Orson Wells, he wasn't really at all. But yeah, I get you. Oh god, there's a Frank Herbert in this. Wow. How long has he been dead? 1986, Jesus. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. all the different people that have been attached to, like, Don Quixote or one of those. <laughs> oh wow, it's a, the Die. random scarecrow. And McCaffrey, now dead for 12 years. Wait, the scarecrow is... Someone who's like impaled. Okay. I mean, the scarecrows are always somebody who's impaled, but oh, I got a fist of focus. There was a. There was at one oh, point yeah. intended to be a Cordwainer Smith uh, story in Last Dangerous Visions. Cordwainer Smith died in 1966. Yeesh. It's classic. Boy, from uh, my wife has commented that the graphics are so old, and wonders why old. you're playing okay. games from '96. '97. <laughs> uh, because oh, oh, graphics are old, but you know what else is old? The the Mona Lisa, and and other works of art. This game is art. I I'm hearing uh, wood carving patina in my head right now. Hmm. That, that still plays in the Black Library, right? Don't. Or did they change the... You're in the you're in the Black Library right now, right? Uh, I think it's just called Reverse Library. Can't Lightning. hear the music. <laughs> and yes, I, I mostly hear people talking right now. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's not wood carving patina, it's the same song that plays in um, the Upside Down Chapel. Oh lord, this is one of the most ghoulish things I've ever seen on Wikipedia. Authors marked with a cross have died since submitting their work to Ellison. Oh, wait, Goggle Bob, are you just grinding right now? I was just seeing if I could maybe get lucky enough to get a press again, but I doubt it. <laughs> is it. Is it a random drop? It is a random yep, drop from it the is. How, how close uh, are you to, uh, wait, what, what else do you have to, are you trying to, you're not, not trying to 200% this game, are you? No, absolutely not. No, I'm thinking, I'm looking <laughs> at the time and I'm thinking I'm just going to head over to Dracula now. Did you oh, have so the shield the final boss card shield, right? You know, I did not pick up the Alucard shield, but I cannot remember exactly where that is, and I did not get it's, it. Uh, it's in the underground, I think. You have to fight death in order to get it, if I, I remember correctly. I did already fight death. Uh, the the Alucard sword. Yeah, no, I never picked up the shield. Dead since 1979. Fanboy is just reading a big Yeah, I'll link that list, fanboy. That slit list sounds incredible. Wait, then did you fight Gala Galabroth yet? Galamoth. Galamoth. I mean I, I briefly ran into him but did not survive, but he is not he is not guarding the shield. <laughs> right. Also, beat it's uh, it's just the Wikipedia article in Last Dangerous Visions. Uh, yeah, it has like a, a fucking list a uh, table of contents when it was three books uh, that existed from within Ellison's lifetime. Okay. Holy hell, this man must have been dead for years. 1968. My god, that is... Shit, that's 50 years ago. Yeah, that's more than half a century ago. Yeah, that, that's kind of like, my dad was 18. <laughs> I'm going to assume that this guy has probably been dead for a really long goddamn time because he does not have a Wikipedia article. Gasp. <laughs> so just by virtue of, like, a, a, a current 
sci-fi author who had died relatively recently would have an obsessive Wikipedia article, and one that was within our lifetimes would have a pretty obsessive Wikipedia article. This guy must have been dead for quite a long time. Where are you seeing the list of like um, uh, authors that have since passed away? It's listed. So there's a on the list of stories. There's a marker for everyone that has passed away. It's a little cross symbol. Huh. Uh, authors Mark Ross have died since submitting. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Yeah, it's probably and, a good half uh, of them. Yeah. But double cross means like, oh, it was published, uh, somewhere. Yeah, it was repu- it was- re it has been published in something else since- by their estate. Yeah. Okay, or in, the case, or in the case of noted homophobe Orson Scott Card was published, uh, I guess by him. Yeah. A lot of these probably were not, strictly speaking, uh, exclusive rights sold. Let's see... I would imagine he would have put, like, um, hey, you know, if it's, been, if it's been a few years that I haven't finished this yet, uh, you could put this out elsewhere. Like, for what he agreed, and he probably gave, like, specific preferences to certain friends or whatever. Oh, we're really- you're really doing this without the Alucard shield, huh? 1993, I mean, and this man looks like he's not he was... that difficult. Okay, I... I don't know, maybe because I was doing it late at night, I found Shaft a little bit difficult, but that's just me. Avram Davidson... Why is, is it opening up? Ones. This man died in 1993, but he looks... like, the Wikipedia picture makes him look like he's about home in 1856. Oh, so you, you may have been able to guess by that scream that I'm once again playing guilty. <laughs> oh, you were drowned out. It's fine. You're safe. <laughs> Cont continue swearing as much as you'd like. This short story yes. has two co-authors and both of them are dead. <laughs> That's incredible. One of them died in 1977. <laughs> the other in 1978. Damn. There's a fireside theater uh, short story in, like, book three or something. Hey, that group broke... Yeah. How long is this? This is, like, you, you feel the weight of time reading these, like, dates of death. 1976. Some of these guys are missing a cross. Oh lord, oh. this hasn't been updated. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that right now, actually. Yeah, that's, uh, that's wise. Oh, yeah, it literally it literally is David Wise. Oh. I was just making a statement that like, oh, it's it's wise that someone do that. David Wise died in twenty twenty. Uh and this is David Wise, uh, parentheses writer. Um, David Wise died in 2020. Uh, so publish changes. And okay, now you can refresh. Thank you. Double check. That reminds me, I need to go and update another Wikipedia page. Are you checking whether the. But you never planned No. Maybe. Yes. Your human soul is frail as his was. You ah, oh, it's still there. <laughs> what is, what, what do you do? Enough, beta. What what page? No, no. it can't. It can't. It can't it's, be spoken loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you God! They missed. There's the another one. Doris. Thing. Doris Pisharia. I'm gonna do that too. Uh, where is it? Doris. I vandalized one specific Wikipedia page on a, on a regular basis, and it has not been unvandalized in years now. I just check off. I They've given months. up on you. It's still there. Taurus Pitkin Buck, 1980. <laughs> Your beloved darkness awaits you. Oh yeah, so I well mentioned this in the group chat, but eternity. yeah, apparently some random the Wild Arms wiki is now stealing from my Let's Plays. Like, yeah, I saw that. One hundred percent is lifting what I've written, which is funny because like I literally awesome. made a joke about goggles and I'm Goggle Bob. <laughs> it just, I don't think it makes sense in the context of the wiki. <laughs> no, it does not. I always think of that like one um uh, one website that mirrored the um uh, the Wikipedia. Description for the Crystal Triangle, 
when I had vandalized that. <laughs> There's an accurate description for it now, but uh, somewhere out there, you can still find some idiot talking about the albino alligator at the, in the bottom of the sewers of South Brunswick, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's another one that I haven't caught, Robert. Wait, Kirsten, albino been... alligator, because I uh, my game has that in uh, the sewers of South of uh, Fake City, New Jersey. Nice. Uh, South Brunswick is deeply real. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say I'm in New Jersey right now. <laughs> we have any are all Brunswick. Are you really? <laughs> You we even have oranges? It doesn't make much sense. Great well, it's oranges. because of the Dutch <laughs> colonizing, that's why. Walnut, peanut, pineapple, smell. What they, okay, so apparently one of the people who is going to be in The Last Dangerous Visions was like a football player for the Dallas Cowboys. Huh. Awesome. And either it's that or it's someone else with the same name of Robert Lilly. Let me see something. Let's see what your distribution Okay, to actually talk about the game we're playing at the moment. Can, I've, never. I've never understood what this Ooh. final boss is supposed to be. Is it like a hulked out throne? Or is this like Dracula absorbing different monster parts? Or what's going on here? Many things. I mean, like, uh, no. it sort of looks like he's sitting on the back of it. That's the thing. Like, like he, he definitely has, like, a I'm just gonna chill here, like, vibe. And then he gets you a Bible lesson. <laughs> I don't have Matthew many positive things to say about the Kingdom Hearts series, but I did like the bit in Kingdom Hearts 2, the phase of the final boss, where he can't even be bothered to get up off of his chair while he's beating your ass. Mm -hmm. well, oh, I didn't I appreciate Kingdom that. Hearts. Yeah, I know that's like that's what I noticed also <laughs> is um like I, I brought up like how the Kingdom Hearts rhythm game is like canon or whatever. I think last stream and <laughs> and I think uh you fanboy you were like saying Probably yelled um, some plus words at you. <laughs> no, they they said like uh, or you said, um Do you know where you are? Like you're talking to a very specific crowd. <laughs> it, is a, it is a very Kingdom Hearts positive chat, except for me. Yeah, that's that's why I thought, like, oh, maybe this isn't, you know... And also, like that. literally wrote the book on the lore in some cases. <laughs> yeah, no, Goggles, Goggles' write-ups of Kingdom Hearts, which I am partially responsible for, is novel length, at least. <laughs> Put that they're really fascinating. The I'm very glad, I'm very glad he did them. But, like, you know... Lisa, forgive me, Trouble Trophier. the soul of my mother no more. Ah, how, sorry, how could I have lost? So, I, tragically I do love Dracula's art. It just looks so fancy. It's a fancy I love, love the one pixel King red dot Hearts. eye if you look at it. Wow. Yeah, that's great. A vision in minimum pixelage. Words. She said, do not hate humans. What were Lisa's last words? Then at least do them no I do love that we well, maintain that theirs, is, theirs is a hard lot. Is literally her last words. That she would love you for it's like, eternity. it sucks to be human! <laughs> it's rough, it's a hard life, especially in like 1700s. Yeah, and you have to yep. consider she was saying this while she was literally being burned at the stake. Like, Here's very a much lady. a hard life. <laughs> Farewell, my son. Time to watch a castle evaporate. Stracula didn't teach me shit about the Bible. Oh yeah, I love these, uh, I love these FMVs. You think Alucard gets pissed off that, like, every time he beats back his dad, like, the entire castle just evaporates so he can't inherit a damn thing? I don't think I he don't... particularly wants it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think he's he... good without it. Also, he's still got a lot of money. Like, you got a lot of money during this. He could just buy a nice... You didn't pay that librarian like, shit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually buy anything other than that, uh, one thing. Well, I mean, well, I mean no, I mean, he has a Yeah, lot no, it's just, like, the, the joke of, like, Gaga Bob has a ton of extra money by virtue of having not paid the librarian shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you made it. Librarian doesn't deserve our money. I, I respect supporting your local so library. You had to fight your own father? Okay, but not that guy. He was living in Dracula's castle. We wouldn't be Rude. John William Jakes. Another author died 
And, uh, Still, I, 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 I couldn't have I'm just, easy. like, I keep Just going up. down these to make sure that they're all marked. Okay, let me just look at the rest of the book. Too. Okay, yeah, another one. Uh, Mildred, okay, she's still alive. This guy's still alive. The homophobe is still alive. cursed. What happened? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Kelly got right? beat up, I think. Yeah, Kelly got beat. I see. We believe in you, Cal Scrub. Well, He's Muppetons. He's Muppetons. <laughs> what happened? What? I love that I said that last well, time, and here we are. After him or not. <laughs> I, mean, I thought it was Fanboy that said it. I, I was the one that described you as being like a Muppet. <laughs> and Goggle Bob declared that that was now engraved upon his vision of you. Yeah. <laughs> it's forever. Maybe. Muppet. Let's go. All right, well, it is getting close to 11, so I am going to sign off for the evening and go to bed. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the end of the game. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, that too. These are the credits. Were you even watching? Peace. <laughs> no. Maybe. Shut up. Good night. Good night. Now let's all sing We all Are right. the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is it true that this song was made because uh, the composer lost a bet? The only thing I've ever heard about I Am The Wind is that it was largely, like, made because they had already, like, contracted services for things like Su Sui Coden, so they were just going to use them. Ah. Well, what about the, uh, the one song from Metal Gear I never thought, like, fit in any level? <laughs> Might also have been involved in that as well. But see, like, if, if it were playing, like, like, this is, uh, a, like, a sister genre of, like, Snake Eater, maybe? I don't know. I'm it's also, I don't think, actually playing it right now, because I think this is doesn't have it. Assistant yeah, director, I am the one typically Oji Iga. What if, what if Dracula's Castle had a really long, like, ladder segment, where, uh, oh! <laughs> yeah, uh, that, wasn't in, that wasn't in response to that. <laughs> we, we're all very excited about this ladder, thank you. <laughs> yeah, ladder, ladder segment, and then they just play like a theme song of something in it. That'd be neat. Okay. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> oh. I'm gonna keep recording this here. <laughs> Contactless, contactless Cali Scrum. <laughs> Unfortunate no! moments. Just imagine the combos that are happening to him as we speak. Pretend that I'm doing them, even though it does not make any sense. Given the, the uh... Like... Snake eater. Look out, boy, I shall chew you up. <laughs> Well, wow. okay then. Oh, here she goes. Here she goes. She's a snake eater. <laughs> yeah, and that's not the Holland Oaks I've had in my head all day. <laughs> you make my dreams come true. Right, uh, I will stream. I, I don't know how long you guys are willing to, because I, I get to play for another 40 minutes. <laughs> hmm. But we're still watching the the special thanks of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Speak for yourself. I'll, I'll, I'll just get that started uh, early then. <laughs> you make my dreams come true. We, we are thanking Takashi Tateyashi. I, I cannot pronounce names. Like, I can't pronounce names in English, I'll be honest. <laughs> it's okay. Why, Matt? Why? Why, Matt? <laughs> uh, okay. oh, wow. So what was your favorite moment of Symphony of the Night? Uh, farewell, my son! <laughs> that just happened! <laughs> why it was in my head. Fair enough. Oh, I didn't... I, you know, there, you know, I could do an entire stream of just the random BS in this game. Like, straight up, uh... 
like just playing with the shield rad, like uh, summoning the Gradius shields and stuff. <sighs> That's a thing you can do. You make my dreams come true. <laughs> Oh, what is what was my favorite uh what am I, what am I? I just like playing the game <laughs> <laughs> it's a good game <laughs> it, it feels good to move in the castle this is like was definitely a first for the castlevania franchise <laughs> being simon belmont always felt like a punishment <laughs> What I want. Is this, is, this, uh, is this person I'm fighting, like, do they live next door to me? My ping is 10 milliseconds. <laughs> They're in the building with you. <laughs> Get out of my house. <laughs> All right, we're good. Good night, Castlevania. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thanks well, for listening, my son. <laughs> Matthew 1326, I believe. <laughs> good night, folks. <laughs> Yeah.